from Liberty High School in Bilton, Virginia at the Kip Hall Field. Welcome to Eagle Football on Cable 12. Hello, everybody. I'm Glenn Lynch along with Melvin Clark, Steve Angle, Derek Woods, and Carlton Wilkes. This is our Angle Ice Center pregame report. It's season three for Franklin County, and by that I mean they had the non-district schedule. They started the second season with the Western Valley, won that, and here we are in the regionals, so we'll call this season three. And you know, we're talking about Eagle football on Cable 12. It really is Eagle football today, gentlemen. If you look out to that big eagle here at uh, the uh, Kip Hall Field, uh, it's the uh, Liberty Eagles. We're playing the uh, Colonial Forge Eagles, and of course, our Franklin County Eagles and Melvin Clark when you get to this level you got to have a really balanced attack passing got to have a good kicking game you got to have a good running game and I think Colonial Forge will bring all of that today well they really will and uh, for them it starts with their coach Bill Brown he's a Hall of Fame coach already uh, he's won two state titles eight Northwest regional uh, championships 13 district championships and by the way, 192 football games, he's only lost 70, so he obviously knows what he's doing. Uh, spent most of his time at C.D. Hilton, a little bit at uh, Potomac in his third year here at Colonial Forge. And Colonial Forge, as you've already said, a real fine football team. They come in here 9-1, and 7-0 and in the Commonwealth District. They can absolutely pile some points on the board. They average over 42 a game. They give up plus 18 uh, a game, and they've got – some real fine football players, the best team far and away that Franklin County has seen all year. Uh, Blake uh, Fronapple, the uh, big quarterback, he's 6'5", 210. He's got a ten twin brother that plays tight end. And the fullback, he's really big, 6'3", 225. They've got some good running backs. They distribute the ball to everyone. They like to run the football, but they'll pass it. They've been known to open up a game with a long pass, so uh, Franklin County has really got to be ready to strap it on in all phases of the game. And that one loss was a five-overtime loss to Woodbridge earlier in the year. Absolutely, and both teams, uh, again, piled a lot of points on the board. A lot of people think that uh, – Although Battlefield is ranked number one in this area and number three in the state, that this team is perhaps the best team in this part of the world up here. All right, Melvin Clark, I'll turn to Steve Angle now. And Steve, Franklin County coming in here, already considering in the playoffs last week's ball game to uh, Osborne Park. Thought they should have won the ball game. We thought so as well. You know, Franklin County is going to be bigger than Colonial Forge here today. But as we saw a week ago, that really doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter at all when you get to this level of football. It's execution and speed. Last week, Franklin County at home against Osborne Park had every opportunity to win the game but couldn't execute when they needed to, especially in the short yardage situations, which becomes paramount today as Franklin County takes on Colonial Forge. The Franklin County defense has played outstanding for the last two weeks. Offensively, Franklin County been a little sporadic uh, with the ball. So today, Franklin County must put a complete game together. Now, the big thing for Franklin County to do today, the key to the game, and in my eyes anyway, is ball control. Need to give the... Uh, Offense opportunity to put together drives and get down the field, keep the defense fresh off the field. Because the way, obviously, you know, with uh, Colonial Forge averaging the big points they have, you know, you keep that offense off the field. Now, one thing we looked at in the press box before we came down, the scores to Colonial Forge's games. All those games they've been in except two have been blowouts. So, you know, it's just nature to coast a little bit when you get a big lead. So, you know, Franklin County, this game is going to be close, and it's going to force both teams to play, you know, all four quarters. And they control the ball, cut down the turnovers, and Franklin County has an excellent chance of winning this football game today. All right, Steve. Now I'll turn to Derek Woods. And, Derek, we have been – uh, awestruck by the field here. It's artificial turf. That's why the games, three games today, actually are going to be played here today with uh, the other two coming up after Franklin County and Colonial Fords finish. But, boy, the turf down here is so great. It'd be really great to have this at Sidelon uh, Stadium. But that's the reason the game is here, and what a great facility for you to work on down here on the sideline. Oh, it's nice. It's soft on the feet. I can't find any red mud anywhere, which yeah. I don't really like. <laughs> Doesn't match my shoes at this point of the season. Just a great facility. It's obviously Obvious the wind is going to be a factor. It seems like it is constantly blowing towards the scoreboard, and uh, it's been blowing since we've been here for a couple of hours, so uh, I'm sure that'll come into play. But just an excellent, excellent facility here at Liberty, and uh, 
Sure do like this field. Oh, it sure is nice. It so sure have is. a good game. Stay right. warm down. I'm here. gonna do my best. It's a little chilly here. It's today. nice. All it's right. really nice. All right, I'll turn to our statistician now, Carlton Wilson. Carlton, we've talked about all the X's and O's, and I know we got to tee it up and play it, but who should win this game on paper? Other than the obvious Eagles, right? <laughs> um, I think the the Franklin County Eagles just have to, as Steve said so well, just need to be consistent control the clock. Last uh, week's time of possession was like 28 to 20, Franklin County's way, and we should have won the game. I think everybody understands that. So controlling the ball, and they've had entirely too many turnovers in the last four or five games. They need to keep the, the defense off the field and really avoid the long strike a home run play. All right, keep your pencil sharp today. Absolutely. (laughs) All right, everybody. When we come back, Chris Jones, the Franklin County boss man, will visit with us. We'll meet the Franklin County starting lineup. And Bill Brown, the uh, Eagles coach from, of course, Colonial Forge. It's going to be a little tough doing all this today with the Eagles around here. But when we get back, we'll do all of that when the Angle Ice Center pregame show continues. You're watching Eagle Football on Cable 12. All right, back here at Kip Hall Field, joining you now the starting defense for the Franklin County Eagles. Dylan McAllister, defensive end. David Hancock, nose guard. Greg O'Neill, defensive tackle. Will Chip Wood, defensive end. EJ Manns, outside linebacker. Trey Preston, middle linebacker. D.A. Reynolds, outside linebacker. Alexander Keyes, cornerback. Brandon Maddox, cornerback. Chase Hughes, Wolver. Nick Adams, free safety. All right, Franklin County head coach Chris Jones will join us next. You're watching Eagles football on Cable 12. Welcome back to Kip Hall Field at Liberty High School in Bilton, Virginia. Franklin County Eagles taking on the Colonial Forge Eagles in regional action here today. And Franklin County's Chris Jones joins us now in our Angle Ice Center pregame show. Coach, let's go through the scenario here. Uh, Season three is what we're calling this. You had the first five non-district. Then you play the Western District, uh, the Western Valley District. You win the championship there. Now we've moved on to the regional. So this is season three. Uh, Colonial Forge are well-balanced football team. They can run well. They can pass well. And it'll be a good one here today. Yeah, uh, we're going to have our hands full, that's for sure. Uh, but, you know, we're going to have to come out fast and play fast and uh, play well, that's for sure. Coach, let's talk about, you know, the, the postponement here till Saturday, having to move it away from Colonial Forge. I think that maybe is in your favor. It's in a way, uh, uh, an away game for them as well. Yeah, it probably is in our favor. Uh, but I'll tell you, it's been a rushed ordeal. That's for uh, dang sure. There's been a lot of people having to scramble and, uh, you know, uh, I would have liked to have better circumstances, but, you know, you take what you dealt and you make the best of it and roll on. And no, you can't control Mother Nature, as they say. Uh, well, I hope you had a good night, the kids. You came up last night and spent the night, and you're here ready to go today. Let's talk about your Eagle Ball Club. You know, uh, a lot of folks, you know, think when you get to the regionals, well, I don't know, are you going to win? You're not going to win? You're very capable of winning this ball game today. Yeah, we're just going to play well. We're going to play better than we played last week. That's for the uh, Dag on Shore. And we get scoring opportunities. we got to take advantage of them today against these guys. Uh, they have a super high-powered offense, and we're going to have to play much better on defense as well and, uh, and play our assignments and do what we're coached to do and, uh, and put ourselves in position to make plays. Talk about their quarterback a little bit, Fronaffel. He's a big kid. He's 6'5", 210, and his twin uh, brother plays a defensive end and a tight end. Talk about that setup. Well, it kind of reminds me of the uh, Phillips brothers I had at Bath County. Jake was starting quarterback at William & Mary for three years, and, of course, John's playing for the Dallas Cowboys now. So it uh, reminds me a lot of those two guys, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, very talented, and uh, I mean, that quarterback puts it on the money. Of course, you know, one of his favorite receivers is his brother, and uh, they're just outstanding football players to go along with uh, quite a few others they have. Injury-wise, we're okay. Keys is back, I think. Keys is back. Uh, Terrence Gill will be back. So, uh, you know, we're pretty much full strength, and, uh, you know, we're just going to go out and make plays and play well and play smart. All right, Coach, one other thing, the environment here. First of all, the turf is great. There's going to be no mud, and, you know, they with all the rain that's been in the area, some places have had as much as seven to nine inches. I think about two and a half here is all, but the field will be great today. But there is a wind blowing toward that scoreboard today, and as we know, in the last four or five ball games, the kicking game has been a factor. Yeah, it has, and I think that's in our advantage, uh, you know, in watching them. We're, we're a little bit better in specialties, and we got to make some plays on specialties. That's for dang sure. Uh, but, yeah, we'll take that in consideration whether we're, which way we're receiving it and what we're doing, and, uh, you know, it should be a good one. You're going to take the ball if you win the toss? 
Yeah, I think so. Okay. <laughs> it's a safe bet. All right. Okay, Chris. Good luck in this one. All right, thanks. All right, man. Okay, we're going to come right back. The Angle Eye Center pregame show will continue after this timeout. You're watching Eagle Football on Cable 12. We're back with more of our Angle Eye Center pregame show. Join us now, Colonial Forge head coach Bill Brown. Coach, uh, players play, coaches coach, and we got to start with you. You've been doing this a long time, your third uh, head coaching job. Uh, you've won a couple state titles, 13 uh, regional championships, 13 district titles, close to 200 football games. How does this football team rank up against all those numbers? Well, you know, what we try to do is build programs. And uh, right now our challenge is to build a Division VI AAA program, and uh, it's a step up. Uh, we've been in Division V for a few years. So, uh, you know, that's our focus. I've been there before. Uh, I know what it takes to get there, but it, it's still a, a process. Well, Coach, you come in here 9-1, 7-0 in your uh, district. Uh, I know it had to be a heartbreaking loss at second game of the uh, season, five overtimes against Woodbridge. How's your football team grown since the first part of this season? Well, you know, I chose to play Woodbridge. We got them on the schedule for a purpose, and that was for us to get a measuring stick of where we are and where we need to go. And uh, it was really a good game for us. I mean, obviously you don't want to lose the game, but our kids fought for five overtimes. Woodbridge is still undefeated. Uh, you know, if we were lucky enough to win this game today, we'll play Woodbridge next week. So having that experience under our belt, we've grown a lot since then. It was good for us. Well, Coach Franklin County, no stranger in the last few years to coming to this part of the world. Uh, several playoff games against Osborne Park, Osborne, and uh, the last couple of years have played Woodbridge during the uh, regular season. And uh, that's something that's a change over days gone by. So Franklin County certainly knows the brand of football this way. But tell us a little bit about uh, what your Eagle team brings to the field today. Well, you know, I think we have a balanced offense attack. Uh, we've done very well this year. We're averaging 42 points a game. So offensively, we, we, we do a lot of things. And we've got a lot of different people carrying the football and catching the football. Defensively, uh, you know, that, that's an area where we've had to grow and we're still growing. And uh, Franklin County is the uh, smash mouth football. And they're big, big doesn't describe it. Uh, the, the tailback's gonna run right at you. If there's a hole in there, he's gonna hit it. Uh, so we don't, you know, smash mouth football is, uh, I've seen a lot of it over my years, but not too much recently. So uh, it's gonna be a challenge for us to line up and then see if we can uh, hold up to the physical part of this game. Well, Coach, uh, you mentioned you average 42 points a game, and I, I think somewhere along the way, outside of a couple of football games, your kids have not had to play a hard, complete football game. Is that a concern today? No, it's not a concern. We've played a bunch of hard football games right to the end. Massaponics has a real good football team. We had to come from behind to win that. Uh, the Woodbridge game, it couldn't get much tougher than that. River Bend's got a good football team. Uh, we've faced a lot of good teams this year, so, uh, you know, I don't see that. I can't hold that as a negative that we've uh, been able to, to beat them, you know. So, no, I, I don't think that the challenge is uh, something that, you know, is presents different than what we faced. Well, Coach, one last question. Uh, obviously, you'd like to be playing at uh, your home field. Uh, you're several miles away. Is, is this like an away game for you? Somewhat, somewhat. We'll probably be missing some folks that would have been at our place. Um, you know, this isn't on our schedule. Liberty High School is a, a double-A program now, and, and so our people aren't familiar with this facility and being here. I just want to thank them for hosting us, allowing us to be here, because uh, with this weather we've had, I don't know where we would have played. Well, Coach, appreciate your time. Good luck in this uh, football game, and uh, enjoy talking to you. Thank you. That's Colonial Forge head football coach Bill Brown. You're watching Eagle Football on Cable 12. Back at Kip Hall Field, built in Virginia at Liberty High School, the Colonial Forge Eagles and the Eagles of Franklin County in the regional playoff game. Here today. We're going to go down the midfield in just a moment for our coin toss. The following program is a presentation of Cable 12 Sports. Any duplication of the game, including highlights, without the expressed written consent of Cable 12 is strictly prohibited. 
Right. Well, gentlemen, this game is about to get underway here. It's a great day. Temperature in the 50s. we got a wind blowing toward the scoreboard at about 10 miles per hour. Could be a factor here in the ball game. And, you know, uh, we've had in the last four or five games, we said this earlier in the pregame show, Melvin Clark, but the, uh, the wind's been a factor and the kicking game has played a big part, could have, in the Osborne Park game a week ago when they missed that extra point. Well, Glenn, uh, without question, uh, obviously, if this one is uh, close, the wind is going to be absolutely a factor. I'll throw it on a limb, and if it isn't close, uh, it will be the factor. Looking across the way, the captains for Franklin County, T.J. Shaw, Chase Hughes, Jamal Spencer, Will Chitwood are out there. And uh, four, the Eagles of Colonial Forge down front, Matt Marino, John Cundiff, and uh, Dimitri Cox. And we will go out to midfield. Mr. Eric Barnes, who is our referee today, will be conducting our coin toss along with Brian Bartz. By the way, it's a father-son a referee umpire situation here today. And we're going to go out to midfield and uh, listen in on the uh, coin toss again. The weather, 55 degrees or so here. 10 mile per hour winds blowing toward the scoreboard. Let's go out right now to Mr. Eric Barnes, our referee. Let's go, All right, man, come in and shake hands. All right, man, I'm Mr. Barnes, the referee. Mr. Barnes here is the umpire. We'll be the two officials in the middle of the field. If you have any questions at any time today, make sure you come to one of us and we'll try to give you some assistance, all right? Hey, it's a great day for football. I congratulate both teams on making the first round. What I want you to do today is I want you to focus. I want you to hit hard. I want you to play hard. The thing I don't want you to do is I don't want you to talk across the line. Let's have good sportsmanship on both sides today. Everybody clear on that? Yes, sir. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. All right, Green, you're the home team. The big flag here is the heads. The small one is the tails. There's the tails. Here's the heads. I'm going to throw the coin in the air. Hopefully, I won't drop it. Uh, and you're going to call it what's in here. All right, who are you going to call? He's going to call heads. He calls heads, and he's got a tails. It's your choice here, Green. We want the ball. You want the ball. All right, which goal do you want to defend? Oh, excuse me, White. All right, you go there with Mr. Barnes. Green, you come right here with me. All right, Green has won the toss. Pardon? I'm sorry. Okay, you come over here. No problem. All right, Green has won the toss, and they're going to take the ball. All right, man, shake hands. Let's have a great game. Good luck. Mr. Eric Barnes, our coin toss, as you heard out there. Uh, the uh, Eagles of Colonial Forge winning the toss. Franklin County changed their mind because they did it because of the win, Melvin Clark. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, that one time that has been a huge factor, i.e. the Fleming game. And uh, if, if this thing is close at the end, it will once again be a tremendous factor. Well, it's uh, a great day here for this football game, a Saturday afternoon game. We did have it the first last year. We did three or four Saturday afternoon games, and this year it's our first opportunity. And and what a fine affair it is! Your regional playoff action on cable 12, and this will conclude our Angle Ice Center pregame show as we are ready for our kickoff in this ball game here today. One thing we found out here just. To a few minutes ago, we'll be without a 25-second clock on the field today. Unfortunate because they got two very nice ones. Yeah. We will uh, be watching our, our umpire uh, tonight for the count on the clock. Trey Reed will be the deep man for Colonial Forge. Colby Boone has it teed up at the 40-yard line near the Franklin County bench to kick it off this afternoon. Oh, and the green team is very capable of running one all the way back because they have done that on the year. Waiting on the whistle from Mr. Barnes. There it is, and we're ready to roll here. You see Boone on your screen right there with that number 21 on his back. He approaches, and here is the kick. It's going to be a high short kick over to the right side. McLean has the football. He heads upfield, and he is a breaking tackle. Oh, still tackling. going. They can't get him down. He's out over the 30, 35, up to the 36-yard line. And goodness, they hit him back inside the yep, 20. That is as good a run back as we've seen on the year in terms of getting pinned into the uh, sideline with that uh, sideline kick that Franklin County does. And again, uh, Boone does a good job of getting it over there, but McCleave, one of the... Uh, Colonial Forge running backs. I mean, he is a uh, big kid in Franklin County. Uh, 
I think he's learned real quick out the gate. You can't arm tackle this group. Front Apple sets him up. Here's a give coming around the uh, right side this time. And D.A. Reynolds greets the ball carrier. Reed again on the carry as he's met head up by Reynolds from that uh, defensive end slot over there. And they lose about a yard. It'll bring up second down and 11. Here it is on the replay. And Colonial Forge runs out of the uh, double wing set. And typically when you see that wing set like that, uh, there's a shotgun formation involved. And Front Apple, a big kid, but every play, he's underneath center. Here we go. Wilson has the Wilson football the coming to the outside. He gets over the uh, 36, up to about the 37, maybe the 38. Maddox is going to make the stop, but it's going to bring up third down and long here for Colonial Forge. Been in uh, Wilson, a uh, big kid, just a junior, 6'3", 225. Uh, he's rushed for right at 700 yards on the year and uh, runs straight up, and he's able to pick up four yards. But you see Will Chir Chitwood there scraping off, and Brandon Maddox up to uh, make the tackle. Front apple go into the air. Got him. Oh, oh, my goodness. Mr. Preston headed for six. Yes, right in his hands, and he dropped the football. So here we go with a punt, and coming on, to uh, kick the football is going to be Matt Bartosh. We watch Bartosh in the uh, warm-ups, and he doesn't, he doesn't take, uh, here's a replay on that, while you watch that, Bartosh does not take a very deep uh, set for the uh, snap on the kick. About a 10-yard drop. Well, now actually. But he's backed it up yeah, to he, uh, right yes. at 13. Yes, he has. But an unusual drop. He drops the ball from up above his head. Keys is deep, and the football is going to go to the 34-yard line and be down right there. So Franklin County uh, gets the football in outstanding field position. They have a wind at their back here in the uh, first quarter, so uh, must take advantage of that opportunity. That's a 27-yard punt for Colonial Ford. Spencer down to uh, down the football, and I'm not sure why the young man downed it when he did. It was yeah. bouncing down the field. He grabbed it on the bounce. And uh, Franklin County has it first down and 10. Three and out for Colonial Forge. The Eagles with the football, and you see them setting up with room to the left side this time. Here is Shaw on first down. Eagles out of the eye backfield. This is Spencer right up the middle. Spencer over the 30, up to the 36-yard line, maybe the 37. And he'll pick up about three on the carry, which will run now on second down. And you, you see on that play, uh, Colonial Forge uh, blitzing a linebacker from the uh, outside. That was one of the co or quad captains, Dimitri Cox. But uh, Spencer able to pick up three tough yards. Uh, I don't think any question in Coach Bill Brown's mind what Franklin County is going to do. Uh, in the pregame, he indicates, hey, we've seen uh, smash mouth come ahead uh, football, but not quite like Franklin County brings it. And here we go again. This is Spencer again on the carry, and he's ahead to about the 44. And without question, Colonial Forge, question in Coach Bill Brown's, we see uh, the uh, linebackers, two people, uh, Aaron Bird, one of them, and uh, Matt Bartosh on the outside taking first steps toward Tate Gilbert. They obviously uh, let off the pedal and went back to the inside, but no question, they're keen on Tate Gilbert. Well, Bartosh is the defensive end. He's a pretty big kid, 6'3", 200-pound senior. So here it is, third and four for Franklin County. The football with the nose of it touching the 40-yard line. Shaw will set him up with a slot to the left side this time. Shaw rolling left. Got a man over here, and it's going to be incomplete. The flag is going to come out, and Franklin County is going to have a first down. So Franklin County gets the uh, first big break of the uh, game with that penalty, and it's going to be an automatic first down. Let's see what the call is here. An eligible receiver. An eligible I receiver. Take, I take that field. back. I oh, take it back. Man. They're probably going to decline that. Well, yeah. the county I, well, I would think, but I mean, uh, let's watch this on a replay. And, you know, that, that flag came from the guy over covering the downfield play. Yeah. Not sure who they're going to say was downfield. Well, you know, I, I don't see anybody. I, I'm, don't get it. I mean, I don't want to understand this. Don't get at it. At all. I mean. But you know what? It's so. That's right. <laughs> if, you don't, if you don't think it's so, look back at Tim Scott. He's back there to get the punt for, Frank, for uh, the uh, Eagles of Colonial Ford. So three and out for Franklin County as well. Adams is back there to kick the football. High snap. And he got it away. And he got he 
Did he get away? ever get it away? And boy, it's getting a good Franklin County yeah. pass. And the football Whoa. back at the five-yard line. Tremendous punt. 55 yards. Hughes is the man down there to uh, cover for Franklin County. I thought the ball was going to be blocked. Yep, and uh, Colonial Forge, uh, they obviously had a uh, punt block on right up the middle, and Adams does a tremendous job of getting that off, and what a punt it was. So, Fronaffle will bring up the Colonial Forge Eagles from the five-yard line, actually just over the five. You're going to see right there good coverage down there by Franklin County on the replay. So here's Fronapple setting Colonial Forge down. Had a man going in motion. Wilson with the football, I mean, and he goes doing. nowhere. He's going to lose yardage. Tyler Wilson did not like the way that Dylan McAllister came in there and tackled <laughs> him. And uh, for some reason, that shows up at the end of this play. Tweedy, the 5'8", 145 sophomore wideout, goes into the ball game. Might look for it to go in the air right here. And Tweedy, as we say that, he's going to be a yep. wide out to the right side. Also in the slot over there is Tim Scott. And here's Fronapple. Wilson, Wilson with the football. Boy, he gets into the secondary. Room. Cuts back. He'll have a first down over the 10, up to the 15, out near the 14-yard line. Mans is going to stop him, but not before he picks up the first down. Well, he comes looping through there, and somebody got him around the ankles finally, Mans, and gets him down. Boy, he's a big kid, and, uh, I mean, we can already see in this start of this football game, a uh, little bit of conversation going on the field. Uh, Franklin County's uh, captain's doing a good job of uh, controlling their kids, getting them back. So here we go, the other way, a little, uh, uh, that's Reed on the carry, a little cross buck, if you will, Melvin Clark, and they're out over the 20 now, up to around the 23-yard line. Preston will make the stop. Yep, when you uh, set up in that double wing, uh, one of the uh, primary plays, or uh, all of it, is about misdirection, but that cross buck uh, front and center. So here we go, second down and five. The football is set up at the 23, the length of the football beyond the 23. Tweedy is out to the right side this time. Got a motion man coming this way. Wilson with the football. He's uh, over the 25, up to about the 27 or the 28-yard line. Mans will make the stop for Franklin County, and we're going to run now on third down at about one. I'll tell you what, uh, Wilson is a big kid. And uh, doing a great job. Just a junior. Yep, 6'3", 223 is a big kid and hard to bring down. So, big play right here, third and one. Franklin County could get the ball back if they can hold here. I think they're going to throw it, Melvin. Well, it took time. a long time Call to call that play, play Steve Angle. Got wide outs both ways. We got a motion man, and uh, Wilson right up the middle again. He's going to have the first down. He runs it over the 30, up to about the 34-yard line. Mans again making the stop for Franklin County. Well, you're going to see there the uh, Colonial Forge linemen. They really get off the uh, count. They don't push Franklin County off the ball, but they angle block them and seal them out of the uh, holes, and that allows the lane for Wilson already uh, – I mean, that's a truck coming through there anyway, but when you get him a lot of room, that's a lot to bring down. Here is uh, Fronapple with a man going in motion. The quick pitch coming to the outside this time. Scott is on One the man outside, to beat. cutting back. And he's a burner. Maddox has a shot at him. And Won't do it. He does not get him. Touchdown. It's a 61-yard Six. scamper. 66 yards. That's just good running. Franklin County had him in, in missed a the tackle there, and uh, some good blocking on that toss sweep. Uh, the wide out blocks down, and that block down there was the key to springing him, and after that, it's just a foot race to the fly. The motion man, Tim Scott, goes 66 yards to put a Colonial Forge on the board with 6.13 left. Eastman is going to attempt the PAT. Thrown apple to hold. The kick is in the air. Is it good? Yes. Timeout. 6.13 left in period number one. Colonial Ford, seven. County, nothing. We're coming right back. You're watching Eagle football on cable 12. There's the Franklin Finance School Board. Colonial Ford, seven. Franklin County, nothing. And here's a squib kick. Franklin County.
County has a little trouble picking it up. Preston has it. Starts upfield. He'll get over the 30 and be knocked down at about the 32-yard line. That's where Franklin County will go to work. Well, after a great kick by Franklin County that backed up Colonial Forge to the five. Penalty flag, guys. Yep, that was a six-play, 95-yard scoring drive for Colonial Forge. Tim Scott ripping off the last 66 for the touchdown. Okay. And uh, what we were about to say, you know, Franklin County had a two or three uh, arm tackles there that cannot happen. I mean, you just cannot tackle these backs with uh, that kind of tackle. You've got to do the forearm tackle thing on them here, Melvin Clark. And, uh, that just got Scott out in the open, and he outran everybody. Yep, and uh, Franklin County had to play defense. Uh, again, just could not execute. And uh, this personal foul against Franklin County is really, really going to back them up. Uh, those kind of penalties, I mean, they just can't happen uh, in this kind of football game game and in particular uh, this deep into the uh, season and the kind of fouls that Franklin County has not had all year long. So was the ball outside the 30-yard line? I guess it was because yes, they, they right. marked off a true 15. Oh, yeah, 15. Okay. Not half the distance, but a true 15. Here's Franklin County on first down. Gilbert going around the right side. He gets outside and Runs out over the 20, up to maybe the 23 or 4 yard line. Forced out of bounds over there. McCleave will make the uh, stop that time. He is the uh, safety man. You're going to see, uh, and you've already seen on the replay there, Dimitri Cox, one of the uh, Colonial Forge linebackers. He was stunning on the far side of the field that time and uh, right where Tay Gilbert was. But Gilbert gets to the outside and picks up some nice yardage. So it's second down, and we'll call it four for Franklin County. Gilbert again with the football. Down, he breaks out in the one, open. Two, He's at the 40-yard line. He's at the 30. He cuts back, and he is inside the 30 to the 25. Gonna say, I'm sorry. Going to say he stepped out of bounds way back here where the back official is. Are you serious? you got to be kidding me. That, that, why? Derek, why? Yeah, he, 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 it was close, but I didn't see it. Let's but. watch it on the replay, and let's see if he does. Look at Fronapple, the big tight end turned defensive end. I mean, he is keeping stride with Tay Gilbert step for step. Impressive speed. Well, we actually could not tell whether he went out of bounds or not, but obviously he did. They mark it at the uh, 36, almost between the 35 and 36-yard line. That scamper good for 42 yards. So Franklin County sets up in business. They have a short field now at the uh, 36, we'll call it. Here's Shaw setting up in the I formation. And Spencer right straight ahead for Franklin County. Spencer gets it down to the 30-yard line. He'll get five. It'll bring up second down and five. Tell you what, there's one thing for sure on this football field this afternoon. This is two very, very physical football teams. Derek making the stop that time. He's the outside linebacker. He's 5'11", 160, a junior. I'm not sure what uh, two defensive tackles for Colonial Forwards, 365 and 305. Here's Gilbert again. He deeks his way over the right side. He's going to have a first down inside the 25 near the 23-yard line. And Tay, Gil Tay Gilbert stayed away from him. Yep. Eric Fronapple, the defensive end over there, making the stop. Uh, did we say that the uh, Blake and Eric are twins? Yes. The Fronapples. They're big kids, too. 6'5", 195 for Eric and 210 for the quarterback. Their two sisters were outstanding volleyball players for Colonial Forge also. All right, here we go. First down, Franklin County. Shaw. Here's Gilbert over the left side. And Tate Look cuts out. outside. Go. He is at the 10-yard uh, line. He's at the 5. And does he get in? Yes. Yeah. Down. Tate Gilbert. When that flag flies, it's a good one. 25-yard touchdown for Tate Gilbert. So the Eagles answer right back. Hey, Gilbert, you're going to see on the end of that play, it looked like he let off the throttle a little bit, but uh, kind of pulled up lame a little. Carlton Wilkes just handed me a note saying this is the 100th game that Franklin County has scored. In high school ball, that's pretty amazing. 
pretty good on uh, any level. And again, I go back to Goad's field. I'm not sure we ever did that. <laughs> Here's Boone. He yeah. hammers it through. No. no. Hit the upright. No. Hit the upright yep. is no good. Boone lost his footing there. Oh, fell down. man. Found the, and the snap was not, the placement was not handled cleanly either. So. Well, you know, we talked about the kicking game. There you are again. 4.45 left in period number one. It's... Uh, Colonial Ford 7, Franklin County 6. We're coming right back. You're watching Eagle Football on Cable 12. Trey Reedy is deep, standing back at about the five-yard line. Boone has it teed up at the 40, of course. Here's the kick. It's going to be over to the right side, and it's going to go into the end zone. Touchback. Great, Great kick. kickoff, and it'll be brought out to the 20-yard line, first down and 10 for Colonial Forge. The Franklin County scoring job took five plays and covered 83 yards with Tay Gilbert taking it in the last 25. Steve Tay Angle. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Melvin. I was just going to ask Steve who that gentleman is sitting down to his right. That is my brother, Don, <laughs> is here from, he lives in Manassas, and he came to see the Franklin County Eagles. Don's a former Franklin County Eagle, a 1972 graduate. All right. Don, welcome. Here's Fronapple giving it to Reed, and here he goes again. He cuts back against the grain and gets over the 20, out to the 28-yard line. A.J. Manns is going to make the stop again from the Will linebacker position. Look at him cut back against the grain right there. Yeah, and you're going to see that all day long simply because Franklin County is so very aggressive in terms of going to the football. That's their answer to slowing up the Eagle charge. Cundiff, Cox, Marino, Easter, and Whaley along the front line for Colonial Forge. Second down and one. Wilson has the football. He gets to the outside. He has a first down. He's dragging people up the field. Boy, I tell you what, he, he is such an impressive football player. And I mean, a big kid. He's got good feet. And if I had one negative, he runs straight up. But hey, that hasn't been a negative so far. No, it has not. And We haven't seen the brother-to-brother -brother combination yet in this ball game. I think it could happen at any moment. I'll tell you what, uh, we already know that uh, the brother tight end can flat run. He's wide is. open. Wide open. That was to uh, thrown Apple. Apple to apple. Apple to apple. Right there you go. It's what I was just talking about. And it's incomplete. I mean, how big is that kid? Oh, man. He's a horse. Yes, he is. 6'5", 195, junior. Mm. Those kids have been starting since they were freshmen. So, second down and 10. I guess I read Coach Brown's mind that time. Good time to throw on first down. You've got them lulled asleep, but it was incomplete. There's the pitch to the uh, left side, and uh, no Franklin County is there. They smell that out really quick. That was what? Chase Hughes and Terrell Basham. And Keys was also over there. That's Dallas Driver. Driver's not a big kid. He's only 5'8", and he's 135. He's just a sophomore. Harim Hilton, the other wide out. Goes in with the play. He's 6'2", 171. He's just a sophomore. This is a young, young yes. Colonial Forge team. Driver is in motion again. And they come back the other way this time. And Colonial Forge is going to have to give up the football as Preston will make the tackle. It'll bring up fourth and a bunch. That play, the uh, counter did not work. Franklin County doing a good job of pushing the offensive line of Colonial Forge back, throwing the linemen off, and uh, stepping up to make the uh, tackle. Maddox is deep for Franklin County. Nick Adams is the up man. And to uh, pop the football, is Bartosh. And he gets the ball away. It's going to be a short kick. It'll take a Franklin County bounce, and the Eagles are going to have the football in great field position. Look, you watch Dylan McAllister on the other side there. He comes off of his block, and if he can flatten out, he, he goes too deep, but if he flattens out, he's blocked that punt. That's a 21-yard punt. So Franklin County trailing 7-6, to 220 left in the period. They have the football. And it's at the 43-yard line. 
For Franklin County, Enix is over the football. O'Neill and Chitwood are the guards. Alexander Tyree are the tackles. Didlake is the tight end. Here's Shaw. Shaw given to Gilbert. Gilbert over the right side. He cuts back and then goes north before Bartosz hits him head up after about a two-yard gain. Well, that is that play there is one of the few times that Colonial Forge has not blitzed someone, and all that says is, hey, we've got to back up a little bit and take care of this running game. Some respect. Yep. Got to respect the running game. Who Shaw that? comes Ooh. in with a play. Aretha Franklin. Yep, that's okay. right. And okay. R E S P E C T is it? Was yeah, that that's it. I'll show you age down there. <laughs> that's all right. No, just listen to music. <laughs> Slot man to the right, I formation. There's Gilbert again. Gilbert over the right side. He gets to the 50 yard line. He's cut down right there. It's going to be McCleave making the stop that time. Gilbert really doing a good job of following his blocks. Uh, Doing a little weaving and getting that extra yardage, but Franklin County, third down and a long three yards. Well, when your safety is tackling Gilbert, that's a good thing. That's a good that's sign a good thing. for your offense. Because you know what's after the safety? Not the goal line. Third down and three, we'll say. Shaw again. Here's Gilbert He's right up the first. middle. He's got really? the first down. What a cut. I mean, he cut back on the dime. That's what that artificial turf will get for you. Allows you to cut and back. You look at Spencer down. lead up in there, takes on his man, he and Greg O'Neill, and that allows Gilbert to uh, cut back. And boy, that's a critical first down. Defensive end, Matt Bartosh, the 6'3, 200 pound senior, is making the stop right there. We got uh, Sharon Rogers checking in defensively here for Colonial Forge. Eagles with the first. Gilbert again over the right side and he ran off yards. Well, he stumbled over somebody at that time. Watch the replay. There's O'Neill uh, pulling and uh, Greg getting out on a linebacker, but uh, as you said, Glenn, uh, he stumbled yep. and if not for that, he's got a lot more green in front of him. Outside linebacker, Travis Farrick is the young man who made the stop that time. Second down. I think Franklin County's going to let this clock run out and come to the end of the first quarter because it wasn't whistled in until right after 25 seconds left. All right, so we will take a break. Time out. We've played one quarter. Colonial Ford 7, Franklin County 6. We're coming right back. You're watching Eagle Football on Cable 12. Hello, I'm Darwin Hall, Business Development Officer with Fidelity Bank in Rocky Mount. Many of our great checking accounts come with free online banking. You can view all of your accounts online 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can check balances, transfer money between accounts and pay bills easily and conveniently. Fidelity Bank also offers all-day banking. All transactions are credited on the same day before 5 p.m. Visit us in Rocky Mount at 77 Powder Creek Lane or on the web at fidelitybankshares.com. Member FDIC. Are you coming in? Is something happening to my brand new car? No way. Fine, sit yourself. Need a body shop? TNT Auto Body, Route 40 East, Glade Hill. Milton, Virginia, Liberty High School, the Colonial Forge Eagles and the Franklin County Eagles in regional playoff action. Great afternoon. We finally have a little sunshine shining down on the field out there among all these clouds up here. And boy, how refreshing yep. is that? It sure is. We've seen enough rain here for a while. It followed us, or we followed it right up the road when we came north here to play this ball game. So Franklin County with the ball, second down, and we'll call it seven. The ball is at the hash mark right out in front of the Colonial Forge bench. Eagles, of course, will set up in the I formation. And uh, Coach Jones had to call Shaw over for something. Eagles are going to have to hurry up to get this play off here. Here's Shaw. The give is to Gilbert. Nothing. And nothing. Well, you know, you've got a situation here where uh, Cox making the stop that time, but you, you know, you got to wonder, you know, you get that play in there real late. And no 
those things happen? Yes, they do. It's not Chris. Third down, and now it's seven for sure. Young Tay Gilbert just had 670 pounds to fall on him. Tay Gilbert has 93 yards in this ball game in the first quarter. All right, here's Shaw on third down. Let's see if the Eagles go to the air, and they will. Big rush being put on Shaw. Got a man out there. That's an affairs right there. Is it calling up? It is intercepted. That. Intercepted. That is interference. Yes, indeed. That is a horrible no call. You're going to see on the uh, replay, Shaw rolls out to his left. He's got a lot of heat by Chaz Martin, one of the big 300-pounders. Gets off a decent throw, but look at that. I mean, the defender knocks the uh, Franklin County player down. And that is the exact... And what's more ridiculous is the uh, back judge looking right at it. That's the exact question Coach Jones wanted to know. Here's Shaw. You see him right there being chased by the big guy. Gets the ball away. And that was from our ground camera. So here we go, Frown Apple. New offensive set for Colonial Fours. That was Dylan McAllister just hung in right back there and pulled the running back down Reed. That was Reed, and uh, Franklin County is going to have him run now on second down and about, we'll call it 14. The football goes back inside the 10 to around the, actually the length of the football. And boy, it sure is nice to have these yard markers here. Oh, the hash marks? Yeah. Okay, nice. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have a wide out to the right side this time for, that's Tweedy, for Colonial Forge. And that's Wilson. This is Wilson. He comes ahead, and he's still going ahead. Finally down over the 20 to about the 22-yard line. Boy, he's a load. Man. Hughes makes the stop. You watch him right here. Somebody tripped him up right there. But you know what? He gets his composure back. And look at that. Gets about six or seven, eight more yards after he is hit. That ankle uh, a tackle, Tim, that was just like shaking mud off his boots. Wide out to the right side this time. Thrown apple sets him up. Third down and one. Got a man in motion. That's Scott. Thrown apple back. Got, Got his brother across. out there. Oh, wide open. Maddox makes the stop, but not before it's caught across midfield at the 44 for the first down. Thronapple fakes the uh, toss sweep to the other side, and Thronapple comes across. He beats both the safety and the corner for Franklin County. Brandon, Brandon Maddox is 5'4", Thronapple is 6'5". That's a 32-yard pass completion from brother to brother. Real mismatch right there. Here's Frone Apple again on the keeper, and he'll be sacked back at the 47-yard uh, line. Heath was in there to uh, do the work for Franklin County. Got the sack that time. Well, one of the things real tough for Franklin County here, uh, two times in a row, Franklin County's had them pinned deep, and uh, Colonial Ford's able to eat the football out. With a big play. That's what really hurts. Here's Reed, and uh, he goes ahead for two or three. O'Neill will be the initial tackler, and Reed will get to the Franklin County 43. It's going to bring up third down and nine. Aquil Tweedy will take the play in from the sideline. Wide side here, and uh, I don't think they're going to uh, pass the football. We've got a youngster that is sick for yep. Colonial Ford. Really sick. There's a uh, timeout. We'll take one. 8.33 left to play in the first half. Timeout. Colonial Ford 76 over Franklin County. We're coming right back. You're watching Eagle football on Cable 12. Here it is on the replay as we come back after the uh, timeout for the injury. There's Fronapple running around back there. Look at that hole. Oh, right. number, <laughs> number 52 that time just was grabbing on. You watch D.A. Reynolds here pick Fronapple up, and I mean plant him in the ground. Uh, Barnes, uh, Langston Barnes, who hadn't been in the ball game here very long offensively. Uh, is the young man who commits the no-no on the hold, and that's going to be a 10-yarder marked that, off. That's huge because it's from the spot of the foul. 
So the ball's going to go all the way back inside the uh, Colonial Forge 40-yard line at the 39. It will be third down at a whole lot now. Clock goes. Eight minutes. Third and 26. I think I said six a while ago, but it's eight minutes left in the half. Here's Frone Apple. Back. He's hit. The ball is in the air, but he has his brother. Are you kidding me? I mean, that cannot happen. That can't happen. I mean, he is hit. He goes from tight end to wide out. He's got a man lined up on him. I mean, he can't get behind you. It just can't happen. And I want you to watch this. We'll, We'll go back and show this again. My, watch right here. At the end of this play, he gets hit, and the ball just goes in the air. Look at that right there. That's McAllister with a hit. That's called a strong arm. Oh, my. What a a good play for Colonial Ford. That covered 52 yards. Mm. My, my, my. 7.41 7.41 to play. First and goal, Colonial Forge inside the Franklin County 10. Got a motion man. Here's Wilson over the left side, and he's going to be stopped at the four. Second down in goal. Hughes making the stop. Well, right there if you got a horse riding. Absolutely. Boy, you just got to wonder, man. Trey Reed coming up there from uh, his wing position gets a good block, and uh, the big guy, Wilson, just rambles. That ball was thrown like a lame duck flying up through there. But it was uh, caught by Eric inside the 10. Thrown apple sets him up. Gives it over the right side to Wilson. And is he in? No, No, he's short. He's short. He's short. So it'll be third down and goal. Hughes again coming up to make the stop for Franklin County. Boy, if you force a field goal here, how big would that be? Be huge. Third down. Drivers wide out to the right side. We have a wide out to the left. Big guy takes it in. Touchdown. Wilson. No, Frone Apple kept it. I'm yep. sorry, he did. I Here it is. Was, Glenn, they've got so many big guys. I think you pick. 13 to 6, Colonial Forge. Well, the, you know what Franklin County was afraid of is happening. The big play in this ball game is the difference, obviously. Eastman with the kick. It's good this time. 624 left, 14, excuse me, 13 to 6. 14 to 6, and we're coming right back. You're watching Eagle Football on Cable 12. Franklin Finance School Board, Colonial Forge, 14 to 6 over Franklin County. Bartosh, or excuse me, this is Eastman this time kicking off. And he kicks the uh, football high and deep. Gilbert back to the three-yard line. Gilbert running up. Cuts to the left side, trying to pick somewhere to go. He's out to the 20. He's down there. Pretty good uh, run back. Uh, Gilbert does a good job of collecting the football and taking a look upfield, trying to find out where the uh, blockers are, cuts the ball to the outside, and puts it back in pretty good field position. Gilbert is down, guys. He was grabbing for his knee. That scoring play for Colonial Forge uh, took nine plays and covered 87 yards. So there's a timeout for an injury. We'll take one. 6-16 left to play in the first half. 14-6, Colonial Forge. We're coming right back. You're watching Franklin County Eagle football on Cable 12. First down and 10. Gilbert is helped off the field. Franklin County set to go. Football is at the 20-yard line. Shaw is back. Throws it over here. It's big. That's a wrong route there. Cleave with the uh, pick, and he just flattens out to intercept the ball. Basham runs to the inside. Shaw throws it to the outside. Not even close. It's kind of miscommunication on routes there. Yep. 29-yard line. First down and 10, Colonial Forge. 
Boy, it would be big if they yeah. get in the end zone here. Yeah, huge. Puts pressure on the Franklin County defense. Front Apple has a man going, uh, he's shifting a man over. That's his twin brother. Reed has the football, and uh, he's going to be hit. And he'll get right back There's to about the line flag. of scrimmage. And a real late flag coming in. That's the, the referee threw that flag in there. Let's see what that's going to be. I think they're going to get a face mask. Iffy face mask. Five-yard variety, I believe. Yep, grabbing the face mask. Man, when it's bad, it's bad, isn't it? It's a five-yarder. Man. Football at the 24-yard line after the pick. By Colonial Forge. Michael Clay has checked into the middle of the uh, Franklin County defense replacing Greg O'Neill. Second down and five. Thrown apple rolls to the left side. Football touchdown! Making it look easy. Bartok! Well, I tell you, uh, good, good misdirection call there. The play action pass and Thrown apple absolutely finds a wide open underneath receiver in Bartosh. That, that wasn't even close. That's almost that same play that Franklin County runs to uh, Gilbert. Eastman to attempt the uh, point after. Thrown apple the hole. Kick is in the air. It's good. Timeout. 543 left to go in the half. Colonial Forge, 21, Franklin County, 6. We're coming right back. You're watching Eagle Football on Cable 12. Eastman has it teed up to kick it off. Preston and Maddox are deep. It's going to be a high kick this time. Preston has the football running up for you. Gets to the outside, still going. He'll be out close to the 40-yard line. I think they're going to mark it at the 39, first down, Franklin County. I'm going to go across the field to Derek. Uh, what's the situation on Gilbert over there? Well, he's, he's tightening up his shoelaces right now. Looks like they've wrapped up uh, right below the knee, upper shin. Have put a pad on that, and uh, like I said, he's tightening up the shoestrings right now. I'd look for him to be back. 536 left. A Colonial Ford scoring drive took two plays, covered 29 yards. Man, you just cannot turn the football over in games like this. So here's Franklin County on a first down at the 39-yard line. Shaw is back. Got a little quick out pass That's over there. Bad. That's Basham, and he'll have a first down. He's across the 50 to the 49-yard line of Colonial Force. Reed will make the stop, and Franklin County will have another first down. Boy, so critical uh, as we see Shaw in the replay complete this one to Basham. Uh, so critical for Franklin County to be able to answer the bell here with 529 left in the half. Franklin County will send Enix over the football. O'Neill, Chip with the guards. Alexander, Tyree the tackles. Didlake is the tight end. Preston the wide out to the right side this time. And here's a give right into the middle to Spencer. And nothing doing. Nothing doing at all. Boy, right there, and it's, it's pretty obvious that uh, Colonial Forge knows Gilbert's not in there, so they can turn absolutely every bit of their attention to Spencer, but uh, Gilbert has checked back into the football game, so uh, I think we'll find out real quick where he is. Inside linebacker David Reck making the stop that time. Again, Preston coming to the right side. Basham split out to the left. Another pass right out to Basham. He's caught the football. He's ahead close to another first down. Gotta be close. He doesn't get the spot. Reed is making the stop that time. You see Basham, he just comes in there and hooks in. Yep, does a good job yep. of turning and getting up the field and couldn't quite get stretched out for the first. So Franklin County on the move at the 40-yard line of Colonial Forge. Same setup, Basham left, Preston right, high formation. Here's Spencer, he will have the first down and then some. He's ahead inside the 35, down to the 33-yard line. 
McCleave is making the stop that time for the Eagles of Colonial Ford. And here he is on the replay, though. Yep, and uh, he does a good job of breaking a tackle there. They just about jerked his shirt off. So good leg drive and good effort and determination by Jamal that's Spencer. Eight yards right up the middle yep. for Jamal Spencer. Yep, that's good, that's good work. You just need a foot. First down, 358 left to play in the first half. Here's Shaw. Dropping back. Shaw's got a man out oh, there. Preston County. Preston. Touchdown, Franklin County. Boy, I tell you what, that was an outstanding play call. Franklin County had been uh, pumping the ball, pumping the ball in the middle, and you're going to see Shaw. I mean, it's pass all the way, and right there, that little uh, shoulder move freezes the defensive back and allows Preston to get in behind, not even close. So will Franklin County go They're for two for here? Two. Yep. Got to. 21 to 12. Shaw has been to the sideline. Chase Martin, 6'1, 365, gets in defensively here. How much does he weigh? 360. They don't, the scales mm. didn't go that mm. high. Here is Shaw. Rolling around to the right side. Look the man, Tay Gilbert. Tay Gilbert, Franklin County gets the PAT two times. So with 341 left, timeout 21 to 14. Colonial Forge, we're coming right back. You're watching Eagle football on cable 12. There's a Franklin Finance School Board, 21-14, Colonial Forge. And here's a kick. It's going to be a short, high kick this time. McLeave gets the football. So he's got right to up the field. And he'll be tackled over the 45 at the 47-yard line. Hayden Heath that time making the stop. Hayden is 5'6", 186. He's just a junior. Let me tell you something. Give that cowboy a hand. He bulldogged him down. I keep grabbed by the shoulder pad. Twist and a little spin. 341 left to play in the half. We are at Liberty High School, Bilton, Virginia, Colonial Forge, and Franklin County in regional action here on Cable 12. Throne Apple is moved from the left side. Oh, the ball is on the ground. The Eagles have it. Let's see who gets it. Colonial Forge looks like that first, but nice. he's going to get up off the pile. Franklin County's nice. got it in his hand. Are you kidding me? <laughs> well, how can you come away underneath the pile with the football and it go the other way? Ball is down and... Don't get it. They're fighting for it there right now, but nonetheless, it's a fumble and it'll be second down and 10. See if we can get it from the uh, ground shot here. Well, we couldn't really tell. So here's Fronapple back again. Boy, he's got a ton of time. Yes, he does, and it's going to be incomplete. It's going to be broken up over there by Maddox. D.A. Reynolds also over there, too. Tell you what, that, those are two, two good breaks on the football, and you're going to see Fronapple will play action there, and he's got a ton, I mean a ton of time to throw the football, and he throws a strike, but again, uh, Franklin County doing a great job of breaking on the football. Derek Woods, here it is again, third and long. Let's see what they do. you got the big hey, brother right out here. Here we go, it's the same play set. Out to the left side. Chase Huge steps Throw up. Apple back, being chased. Keeps the football. And he's going to be caught. It'll bring up a fourth down. McAllister puts the chase on. You watch at the end Boy, of this that, play. He's bobbling yeah, the football. And look at McAllister pushing his way to the inside. Gets off of that block. And all of a sudden it becomes a foot race. And if McAllister doesn't make that tackle, uh, Colonial Forge is still in business. Huge, huge defensive play by McAllister. McAllister got his hand and bobbled and knocked the ball up. And he was bobbling the ball as he w went down. Maddox is deep. Bartosh kicks the boy. This is a good looking yep. punt right yeah, here. Yeah, get the win. Maddox gets it. He'll go to the got left side. We have a flag coming up. Oh! And somebody really got a block over there across the way. And that could be the flag. No, this was like way after the flag came out. Let's see what the call is. Here's a replay. And right there, I, I think you're going to uh, see that's holding on Brandon Maddox there. 
Now w- watch right here. Somebody's going to come right in your picture. And they're not yet, not yet. Here you go. Bam. Right there you are. KO. O'Neal. Woo. We are looking at the replay again. High snap. Oh, that's a good kick. That That's the best kick we've yep. seen by Bartosz. Wind will help you a lot if you're a punter. And uh, that's like a he th- official threw that flag like he was throwing the guy out at second base. Mm-hmm. Goodness. He hummed that bad boy across there. He was serious. It's taken a long time to get this one sorted out. Mr. Eric Barnes, our referee. Illegal procedure against... Uh, Colonial Forge. Offsetting penalties. Offsetting penalties. Yeah, do it again. Do it all over again. Yeah, I'd make them punt it again. I think it's Franklin County's option to have them re-kick is yeah. what Coach Jones is asking you about. It. Absolutely yeah. you re-kick. Yeah. Do so, it again. So they're going to back it up yeah. and do it all yeah. over again. In the words of Jimmy Weatherford, do it again, man. <laughs> left in the half, 21-14. Colonial four. Two big, long plays, the difference in this ballgame. Derek, coming down to you here at halftime, I'm going to be real interested in see, to see what Coach Jones says. Got a new Me big too. man there for Franklin County. That's Alex Keyes. Keyes is back. It's good to see Alex back in the ballgame this week. He was out with an injury a week ago. And Keyes back. You can look out for Maddox coming on the block attempt probably and he's kind of itching on this yes side. he is and he's coming oh. they got it away Franklin County lets the ball roll and it's a good kick it'll be down at the 15 yard line down the field to cover Dallas Driver and the Eagles will have some time 2.30 left they trail 21 to 14 if I'm not mistaken everybody's got their time out Look at that turf, man. You know, I, I don't want to be redundant about this, but right there's a good shot of the turf, and it's artificial. That's how we're able to play here. Is it today. dry? It is extremely dry. Well, we were out there. Not the even field. thinking about being down. We were out there on the field before the game. It's just a great surface to play football. On the 36-yard So here we go. Shaw will bring them up. This uh, Spencer again right into the middle. Boy, and uh, Colonial Ford selling out along the uh, line of scrimmage. They've got 10 players up in the uh, linebacker box forward. Only one guy deep. And uh, if Franklin County has got a play in the book to sneak somebody in behind, now's the time. Luther uh, Scafe, the lead tackler at that time for Colonial Ford. Good place for Franklin County to look for the tight end if they keep committing eight and nine people in the box, Melvin. And that tight end that you guys are talking about is 6'2", 210 senior, Justin Didley. And he is set up over there right now. And he's got a tight end on top of him. Here's Shaw. Spencer got it. That ball is fumbled. They took it away from him one of the down. The so it'll be third down. We will too. 136 left in the half. 21 to 14. Colonial Forge. We're coming right back. You're watching Eagle football on cable 12. Franklin County, third down and long. Big play right here. Balls at the 13-yard line. Uh, a little pitch out to Gilbert. He tries to cut back, and he does. Boy, how did he do that? How did he do that? He's, he's, he's gone. He's gone. 50, oh, 50, 50, 50, 50, 20, 10, touchdown. Good. Wow. 83 yards. Woo. That has to be the best one I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I 
Mason Hill, are you kidding me? Three plays, 85-yard scoring drive with Tay Gilbert covering the last I mean, 83. they have got him trapped in no man's land, and all of a sudden he cuts back against the grain, and like we said, they, they are selling out at the line of scrimmage, and if Gilbert or anybody else gets behind them, it's over. So here we are, Boone to attempt the PAT, Shaw to hold. Big play, big kick, snaps up. Plenty good. It's good. Timeout, 119 to play in the first half. We are tied at 21. We're coming right back. You're watching Eagle football on table 12. Reed is deep, and here is Boone. He'll kick it off, and normally they kick it over to the right side to shorten up the run back field. Kevin McCleave, he's winning the ball, begging for it. Here's Boone approaching. This time they kick it the other way. That's right. Reed has the football coming to the left side, and he's going to be hit. It gets away. How did he do it? My goodness, we got a block. We got a block in the back. It's not ball. And Colby Boone is not there. Preston makes the stop, but you watch, you watch. There is a huge block in the back down here. There's a ball bouncing around. Picks it up on the uh, 11 and a half. And Chase Hughes is going to have him. They had him right there right and there. let him Two get people. away. But watch right here somewhere. There is a. Uh, right over there. Yeah, there was a block in the back. Right there. Shovel pass. That shovel inside. pass. That's to McCleave. And uh, he picks up some nice yardage after he was hemmed up. And again, that is a play that they will run on somewhat of a regular basis. They're going with no huddle. The clock is running with 45 seconds left in the half. Second down and four. The pass is over here. It's incomplete. Short hopped it. It'll stop the clock with 39 seconds left to play. And there's a flag. Two flags back I, at the line of scrimmage. i tell you why it was short hop. Because Dylan McAllister just tattooed Blake Ronapper. And it's going to be against. That's holding on uh, Colonial Forge. That's going to back them up 10 from the spot of the foul. That's a father-son combo flag there, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is, as a matter of fact. Holding against Colonial Forge. 39 seconds left. The ball's back out to the 41-yard line. Here it is on the replay. Oh, and McCallister's oh, yeah. the guy that's getting the Yeah, that's right. And there's a ball short hopped out to um, Eric Fronapple over in the flat. Same set up to the right side this time. Thrown apple back, being oh, oh, I he he hammered. <laughs> McAllister gets thrown apple. The ball bounces loose. John Pundiff, one of the uh, quad captains, picks that football up, and I'll guarantee you that thrown apple. He's going to have a sore back in the morning. He is My goodness. headed to the sideline now, and he is punched over. McAllister, oh, I man. mean, he drilled him. You know, that's a defensive player's dream right there. Ball yeah. bounced right into his hands. Yeah. A lot of those old uh, defensive players still lay awake at night dreaming about <laughs> that one. I mean, he comes free and let me have it. You know what? He's held again. Here's uh, thrown apple back, and he's being chased. Pressure again. Got a knee for all. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, that it. can't happen. Are you kidding me? Oh. I mean, there is no way that you can let 83 get behind you. No way. So with 21 seconds left. Colonial Forge goes up 27-21 with a PAT attempt coming. Eastman is in to kick at this time. Snap, kick. Good. Timeout. 21 seconds left. 28-21. 
Daniel Ford. We'll be right back. You're watching Eagle Football on Cable 12. Bartosh is teeing it up. You see him right there. Gilbert and Preston are back deep for Franklin County. Man, what excitement here in this ball game. Big plays. That's the name of it. McIntyre. McTosh. Here's Basham. Basham gets in the secondary. He runs across midfield. He call a timeout right here. It's 14 seconds left in the half. And about another. And that's the same guy step. that you want to jump ball on going on down the field. And Franklin County still got three timeouts. Yeah. And here's Basham. Watch him right here. Does a good job of covering up there. So Franklin County moves over the football. One play, maybe two. Preston to the left side. Basham is to the left. Franklin County has trips to the left side. And Colonial Force does Somebody not have the cut. trip. That's right. Didn't uh, covered, and they get a timeout. Boy, it's a good thing, too. Somebody was going to break wide open on that far side. We're going to hold it here, guys. And... 14 seconds left, 14.2, if you will. Boy, we have a lot of folks that have been with us here all year as sponsors, and there's a lot of folks in the stands that have been with us all year, too. Thank goodness. The Angle Ice Center, Franklin Community Bank, TNT Auto Body Repair, Bob Parcell Realtor, the Davis Law Firm, Redwood Fuel Oil and Propane, the Collinsville Printing Company, commercial printers with state-of-the-art equipment, Rocky Mount Communications, Davis Heating and Air Conditioning, the Comfort Inn, Rocky Mount, Smith Mountain Lake, Redwood Express Mart, Clyde Purdue, PLC Attorneys at Law, Rocky Mount Title, Angle Hardware, Anderson Tractor and Equipment Company, Franklin Finance, Super Country 99.9, Doyle Custom and Broadery, Mike and all the folks, and Martinsville DuPont Credit Union, Bojangles, and the Dairy Queen, Trinity Mission Health and Rehab of Rocky Mount, Fidelity Bank, Darren Hall, Becky of the folks, we got Rocky Mount Apparel with Bob Stone, Creative Curbs in Redwood, uh, thanks to Robbie Hundley, the guys there, and the Riverside Minute Market. We thank all of our sponsors for their cooperation and support of Cable 12 all year long, covering the Franklin County Eagle football team. So here we go, 14 seconds left. Shaw with trips to the left side. Shaw rolls left, looking back. Shaw tucks the ball down. Gets away, still going, and he's going to be down unless Franklin County can get a timeout. It's, they do with 4.8 seconds left. Winters making the stop, and uh, well, you give uh, Colonial Forge a lot of credit for covering up all the receivers. Great afternoon here in Bealton, Virginia. There's our school board with 4.8 seconds left. A lot of clouds around. We've had a mixed bag of uh, weather today. Our weather guy, Jamie Singleton, down there, he hit it pretty much on the head at our dinner last night, saying that uh, we were going to have just about what we got. Melvin, who yep. won the bet? I'm sort of. Well, it's not over. Oh, it's not, it's not over. You must be behind. I got 58 and cloudy. <laughs> I'm hanging in. <laughs> of course, uh, once Franklin County finishes the season, we hope it's about four or five games from now, but whatever that is, after the holidays are over, Cable 12 Sports will be following the Franklin County Eagle basketball team this year. Hope you'll get out and support Doug Cochran. The uh, practice starts here uh, Monday. Monday, as a matter of fact, and uh, it, well, if you're watching this later in the week, it's already started, so... Get out and support Doug Conklin's Franklin County Eagles this year. I guess wrestling is coming up, Steve, at the high yep. school. And uh, Lady Eagle basketball with yep. Coach Ann Crutchfield. Mm -hmm. All right, final play of the half. Here we go. 4.8 seconds left. Shaw, wide outs everywhere. Shaw rolls back. The rush is on. Got a man out there. It's Basham, and it's incomplete. That it will end the half. McCleave is out there defending. Derek, I'm coming over to you. All right, trying to catch up with Coach Jones right here. Coach Jones, first half big plays, I think, is going to be the key. Won't you agree with me? Yeah, I don't know what to do with right now because I'm just trying to figure out how to 
because the heat red of the Division One tight end, the right five, worried about an out route 15 yards in front of us. And it keeps happening over and over, and it's just frustrating as heck, man. I've never, I've never seen anything like it. Offensively, it looks, looks like they don't have a whole lot of answer for Tate Gilbert. I, I assume we'll still uh, keep feeding him the football in the second half. Yeah, we're smart. We will, uh, but we got to find a way to stop him. 28 points in the first half, man. That's just uh, it's crazy. This is what it is. All right, thanks, Coach. All right, Chris Jones scratching his head here a little bit, heading to the huddle at halftime, Melvin Clark. His team trails 28-21. Well, uh... I understand the coach's uh, frustration, and uh, man, when you got a big kid like that, it's the uh, primary receiver. Uh, if, if you do one thing, just do not let him get behind you. All right, we're going to come back. We'll take a look at this thing on paper in just a little bit. Welcome to our Franklin Community Bank halftime show. We'll be right back. You're watching Eagle Football on Cable 12. Ain't even a man. Welcome back to the Franklin Community Bank Halftime Report, Cable 12 Sports, and at the half, Colonial Forge leads 28-21. Let's go down to Steve Angle and see what this thing looks like on paper. Okay, first of all, for the Franklin County Eagles, they were able to snap the ball 21 times in the first half. 18 of those were rushes, netting 193 yards. Tay Gilbert has 176 of those in the first half. Through the air, T.J. Shaw, three of seven for 55 yards. That's 248 yards of offense in the first half. Franklin County punted once for 55 yards. Turned the ball over twice on two interceptions. Were penalized two times for 20 yards. For the Colonial Forge Eagles, they snapped the ball 28 times in the first half. 23 of those were rushes for 137 yards through the air. Blake Fronapple, five of nine for 153 yards. That's 290 yards of offense. They punted the ball three times for an average of 28 yards. Did not turn the ball over. Penalized twice for 20 yards. Uh, the big weapon for Colonial Forge in the first half was the brother combination, Blake Fronapple to Eric Fronapple. Uh, Eric had 123 yards receptions, 123 yards in receptions. Two of those were TDs, and we'll recap the scoring here. First for Colonial Forge at the 613 mark in the first quarter. Tim Scott goes 66 yards on the ground. The extra point is good. Colonial Forge leads seven to nothing. Franklin County comes back. Ties or gets a touchdown from Tay Gilbert. He goes 25 yards. The extra point hit the upright was no good. Seven to six, Colonial Forge. Then in the second period, Blake Fronapple keeps the football, goes over from one yard out. The extra point is good. That makes it 14 to six, Colonial Forge. At the 5.43 mark, Colonial Forge again scores on a pass from Fronapple to Matt Bartosh. That covered 24 yards. The extra point is good. Score, Colonial Forge 21, Franklin County 6. Franklin County comes back and scores at the 3.47 mark. Shane Preston catches a 34-yard pass from T.J. Shaw. The two-point conversion is good. That cut the lead to 21 to 14. Franklin County comes right back and scores as Tay Gilbert gallops 83 yards for the touchdown at the 119 mark in the second period. PAT is good. That knot at the score at 21. Then with 22 seconds left to play in the first half, uh, Fronauer hooks up again for a uh, TD pass to his brother. That covers 39 yards. The score at halftime, 28-21, Colonial Forge. All right, Steve, and of course, uh, Melvin Clark, Franklin County is going to get the football to get the second half underway here, and I think it's pretty important they come right out and get back to work. Well, they do have to go back to uh, work, and uh, on offense, they need to keep on keeping on, but on defense, they really have got to pay attention. And number 83, if he lines up in the tight end slot, they have got to hold him up on the line of scrimmage if he gets in that wide out position. I don't know if you're going to hold him up, but it is absolutely imperative that uh, he does not get behind uh, you because he, he can out jump anybody uh, on the Franklin County team. Uh, he's a fast kid, and uh, did I mention a whale of a football player? 
All right, Melba Clark, I think you're right. The uh, difference in the ball game, the two D1 prospects here for uh, Colonial Forge, and that's quarterback, 6 feet, 210, senior break, uh, Frone Apple, and uh, twin brother, uh, the tight end, 6'5", 195, junior Eric Frone Apple. So we're getting set to go here. We're going to come right back. We've got the second half kickoff coming up. And we're at Liberty High School in uh, Bilton, Virginia, 28-21, Colonial Forge. We'll be right back with the second half kickoff. You're watching Eagle Football on Cable 12. The ball is kicked off. Basham has it heading upfield for Franklin County, and he's going to get out to the 37-yard line, and it will be first down right there for Franklin County. So Chase Hughes uh, did Hughes, a really yeah. good job of uh, returning the ball out. Franklin County with really good field position to start the uh, final half of this football game. And the uh, Eagles will have the win to their back in this third quarter, and <clears throat> Colonial Forge will have it in the final quarter. All right, here we go. Second half action getting ready to get on the way, 28-21. And Shaw will set Franklin County down. High formation, of course. Gilbert right up the middle, and he's got to get well, that's tough sledding to the line of those scrimmage. two tackles. Mm. Yeah, those him, kids are big. They're going to give him, what, a yard on that? Maybe. Maybe a yard. Let's see where they spot the football. Not sure he's going. Yes, they got uh, they, yeah, two. They got him. Two. Yeah. A heavy two. Yeah. Or light two. So... Martin making the stop that time as we're just into the second half. Second down and nine for Franklin County and hold everything. We have an official's timeout being taken here. Aaron Bird, uh, the linebacker in on that last tackle, is shaking up. Uh, he's having some problems with his neck or shoulder, it looks like. You know, we saw a lot of film on this young man that's coming off the field right there. We, and honestly, we haven't called his name much today. No, we have not. And uh, that's a big hole if he uh, leaves out there. Pretty good football player. 6'1", 230. He's a senior. Holding that left shoulder. Yeah, like a bench nerve stinger. or a stinger, stinger or, something. or something. Yeah. All right, here we go. Second down and nine. Franklin County has Basham coming to the left side this time. They have uh, man coverage on him. Here's Shaw. All ten men within five yards of the line. Shaw's back. Got a man up there. That's Bash Basham. He's hey, yes, good right call. Down. Face mask. McCleave back defending, and the flag comes out. I say face mask. Face guarding uh, Tevin McCleave. He knows exactly what he did. He's standing there with his hands on his hips. But uh, good call by the official. Shaw with a lot of time throws a nice ball, and right there, McCleave. Doesn't have a clue, just throwing his hands up. 15 so, yards, automatic first down. Mm -hmm. That'll be a break for Franklin County. That will give the, the Eagles football a short field now across the 50. Uh, and it'll be somewhere around the, uh, let me see exactly where it will be, right about the 46-yard line, I believe. Oh, actually, they're going to take it inside to the 44-yard line. 17-yard penalty yeah. instead of a 15. So, Franklin County gets a break on this march. There's a shot from our camera down with KT. Here's Shaw. Shaw back to throw. Look, got a man up That's there. Basham and got it. by Basham. Go it's going to be a touchdown, Franklin County. Making it look easy. And that was. I say it was Basham. That, That's Gilbert. Is that Gilbert? That's Gilbert. He cut inside underneath him. Tay Gilbert, touchdown, Franklin County with 10.47 left. In the third See period. Spencer uh, picking up the uh, rush from the outside, and Shaw able to get around the big man, and right there, yeah. Gilbert. Gilbert able to slide in between uh, two defenders. Nobody's <laughs> going to catch him uh, when he gets a ball in space like that. Nice ball by Shaw. Here's Boone to tie it. Kick is up. Looks good from here. It is timeout. 10:47 left to play in the third period. We're tied at 28. We're coming right back. You're watching Eagle football on cable 12. You see Boone to kick it off for Franklin County. This time it's going to be a deep kick. Cleve again. Cleve back at the five-yard line, running upfield. Oh, yeah, ball loose. 
It's picked up. Picked up by oh, now. From, from Apple. And boom. Getting a little lick in, but we got a flag to go with it. My goodness. Probably going to be holding. And where that is, that's exactly what it is. A block in the back or holding is going to be coddled against Colonial Ford. All right, watch. Here we go. Now, you got... <laughs> A lot of stuff going on. Yeah, I'll tell you, it's a lot. McCleave carrying the ball out there. It's Nick Adams that bumps him, blocking the back. That'll be half the distance. Eric Fronapple uh, gets the uh, big bounce, and uh, I'm not sure that really matters, but uh, he, he got the good hop. Yeah, and the ball is going to go. Uh, let's see where they put the ball, back inside the 10 at about the, uh, well, between the 8 and 9-yard line. You know, typically uh, this is a backbreaker for the offense, but Colonial Forge has been backed up a couple times, yes. and it's been no sweat. Absolutely. First down and 10, back inside the 10-yard line. Front Apple will set him down. And here is Wilson spinning around, getting away, still going, and finally knocked back after he gets over the 15 to the 16. Preston is the initial tackler. You know, Glenn, we talked about how big he is, how well he runs, how hard he runs, but he does run straight up. And when he gets gang tackled, I'm telling you, he is going to take some punishment. Franklin County, if you saw on the replay, tried to knock the ball loose on that as well. So here we go, second down and one. Thrown apple, has him set up. Got a wing out to the right side this time. In motion, goes the wing. That's Wilson, Wilson again. They just hand it to him tackles. straight ahead. My goodness. He gets the first down. By the way, on that last score, Cable, uh, Trey, uh, Gilbert, uh, Tay Gilbert has scored 20 points in this ball game. That puts him in the number five spot on the all-time scoring list for Franklin County High School. And he's got 222-yard all-purpose yards in this game this afternoon. Raheed Hilton, one of the wide outs, is to the right side this time. Eric uh, from Apple is on the left side. He's the tight end. Franklin County jumps off sides. Give all the credit in the world to Frone Apple, the quarterback. Uh, changes the cadence. Good, good heads up play on his part. You know, you look at the twin brothers, Blake and Eric Frone Apple, and they're just juniors. They're obviously D1 players. And, uh, you know, when something's happening, one of these two, especially Eric, is around that football, yeah. like on the fumble a while ago. These are you really uh, gifted kids. Hilton again will come wide to the right side. They'll set up uh, with a wing to the right this time as well. That's Driver. Thrown Apple back. Got a man up here. That's picked by Franklin County. That's Nick, Nick Adams looking for somewhere to go. Adams goes the other looking way. Looking for the convoy, and he's got it. He's got it. Adams down to the 13-yard line. Tell you what, that is what a safety is supposed to do. Wide as the widest, deep as the deepest. Burn apple, good protection, but throws the ball right into coverage. It looked like the ball was tipped. It was. Yep. And D.A. Reynolds may have uh, tipped that, but uh, Nick Adams, the uh, senior safety for Franklin County, doing a good job of picking it, and he does an excellent job of waiting on his blockers. So Franklin County in business with 9.02 left in the third period. Very important Franklin County convert this turnover into points. Yeah, boy, and the uh, first turnover by... Uh, Colonial Forge on the afternoon, if I'm not mistaken. That's correct. They put the ball on the rug twice and yeah. got it back. Here's Gilbert, Gilbert over the right side. Gilbert's inside the 10, down to about the seven-yard line. And he was making a dart for the uh, flag. You're going to see on there a big Greg O'Neill uh, pulling, and uh, he gets his man on the corner, but uh, he gets there a little late for Tay Gilbert. Well, Quentin Winters, the inside linebacker on that side, puts the stop to Gilbert, but not before he picks up eight yards. The football is at the seven. Second down. The Eagles get the first, just inside the five. Here's Shaw. Oh, everything. Ah, somebody may have moved a little early there. Let's see what uh, the call is. 
Illegal procedure against. Let's run that back. Man, I, I, I tell you, that is so gotcha. close. We really couldn't tell. That is so close. See if we can see anything here. They're saying 72 is what the officials are saying. I, d I yeah. don't get it. Yeah. Don't get it. He, he didn't move. Now, I, I would buy him being lined up off sides, but not an illegal 72 procedure. was all the way across the field from the official through the flag. Second down, and uh, here's Gilbert going over the right side. He gets back to the 10, Picks and up it's not down there. Well, it's tough. When you get down here, you just can't have the mistakes. You've nope. got to put the ball in the end zone. Franklin County needs five yards here, but the most important thing they need to do is get some kind of action in the middle of the field in case they can't pick up uh, five yards and get lined up for the field goal. Well, let's see if they come up with that famous throwback to Gilbert. Be a good spot for it right here. Yeah, I mean, it's lined up perfectly. And they're not expecting it because they're overloaded to the weak side. And now there's a timeout being called, I assume, by Franklin County. It is. 7.23 left to play in the third period. Timeout. We're tied at 28. You're watching Eagle football on Cable 12. So here we go. Franklin County, third down and five. That's Gilbert, Gilbert. Right it's going to be close. Does he get the first I down? I think he's got it. Nah, Let's see. A yard short. Yep, they're going to mark him about, you're right, uh, Derek, about a yard short. What do you do? You, you go, go for it. Oh, you go for it. You go for it right here. Absolutely. They're not lining anybody up on the center, and the quarterback, Shaw, just pick a side. Well, they may line up the guy that's going in there right now. You see that, I don't know, but you can't see him on the Chaz conjure. Martin? Yeah. How big a oh, young boy. fella is he? <laughs> he is. <laughs> he is. 365. Why right. they bring the little guys in? Six more. All right. Fourth down and one. He's got it. He's got it. Side. He is he in got it the first inside. down. Got it to Four. about the two-yard line. He's going to be on about the one from where the official's spotting it on this side. Picked up four. I'll tell you what, that's outstanding line play there. Franklin County, the white shirts, that was just a shoving match. Clock is running, 6.25 left to play in the third period. Eagles can take the lead for the first time in the ball game. It's at the hash mark to the Franklin County side. You see right there, Shaw sets him up. Gilbert's in. In for the touchdown. Franklin County takes the lead. 6.07 left to play in the third period. Franklin County goes up 34 to 28. Tell you what, win, lose, or draw in this football game, this Franklin County bunch has got all heart. 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 Boy, Gilbert going right in there with it. You saw on the replay. Here's Boone to add the PAT. Low snap, kick is up. Snug, missed and it. it's no good. Oh, Bad snap yep. that time. Mm. Haven't had that all year. Nope. Here it is on the replay. It's blocked too. Maybe we can back it up and look just a little bit more here. Here we go. See what happens here. Watch the snap. Snap is low. And there's the uh, looks it like tip? it was tipped. So anyway, it's no good, but Franklin County is up 34 to 28. All right. So here we go with uh, Franklin County getting set to kick off. Man, what an exciting yeah, and football Fra game. Franklin Man. County has scored two unanswered here. And we'll see how well Colonial Forge can play from behind now. And that is hard, hard to do in football, playing from behind. It's hard to do, but uh, they have done that a couple of times uh, this year. They had to uh, come from behind to beat Massapatona, which is a good football team. And... It was just a rock and roll in the uh, second game against Woodbridge. And uh, they uh, came back several times in that football game. Reed is going to be the deep man for Colonial Forge. 
Scott. Scott is back in the game. He's the young man that went out after being sick earlier. And McCleave typically is in that far side uh, slot where Tim Scott is. Uh, they traded uh, positions. And here is Boone approaching. This time it's going to be a squib kick. McCleave's got it again, yeah. though. And he's coming to the right side. Doesn't know which way to go, it looks like. <laughs> And he's going to be stopped out about the 36-yard line, and it'll be first down Colonial Forge. Preston is down there to make the stop. Nick Adams a Nick little Adams, slow yeah, getting a little up. Slow. He's all right, I think. But uh, McCleave uh, doing a good job all afternoon long of returning kicks, and he is met by uh, a white-shirted committee. Boy, I mean, <laughs> there's about uh, six or seven people around. All right, here we go. Cundiff moves over the football. Marino and Cox are the guards for the uh, Eagles of Colonial Forge. Easter and Whaley are the tackles. Got the double wing set up this time. McCleave gets to the outside. He's at midfield, cross midfield, and runs out of bounds at the 46-yard line. Maddox is over there to get him out of bounds. And that uh, little play fake to the uh, wingman, and here comes McCleave across. And uh, give a lot of credit to uh, Fronapple. He's a big kid, but does a wonderful job of uh, hiding the football. And Colonial Forge seals all the Eagles off. And after McCleese gets the football, it's just a sprint to the corner. Clock will start again on the snap with the out-of-bounds play. 5.51, got a man in motion. That's Scott coming to the right side this time. And uh, he's going to be caught. And Hughes gets there to knock him down. And it'll be loss of maybe a yard. We'll wait for the spot. And I'll think back to about the original line, it looks like. Keep your eye on number four, Alexander Keyes. He comes up from his corner slot there, does a good job of fighting off. Off the uh, blocker knocks McCleave down, breaks down, and uh, holds up the ball carrier uh, waiting on Chase Hughes to get there. We ran into uh, Alexander Key's dad, Raymond, at halftime. He's here to see his son play. He's heading up to UVA to see Ray play on special teams for the Hoos this afternoon. Right after this one. There's Scott. Here's Scott. Got Scott. Room. Oh, man, that's a cross buck. A little misdirection, and he's going to be inside the 30 to the Franklin County 28. First Once down. again, Colonial Forge taking advantage of the aggressiveness of the Franklin County defense, and they're able to cut the football back and pick up a long, long gainer. Football at the Franklin County 29-yard line. Cundiff comes up over the football. Tweedy is out to the left side this time. We got the uh, double wing set up. Scott's going in motion. Here is a wide open, incomplete. That's face guarding on Franklin County. Man, that was totally unnecessary. You can tell when the receiver is getting ready to catch the football. Look at his eyes, watch his body. You don't have to do that, just turn around. Just and, turn around. And right at the end there, the ball goes up and the flag comes out. So it's going to be a uh, penalty. And it will also be a first down, half the distance to the goal. And a first down for Colonial Ford. Clock is stopped with 445 left in the third period. A lot of time left in this football game. Wilson, the lone back. They move the tight end front apple over to block, coming around the right side. McGreedy got a flag. It's got coming a flag. back. It's coming back. Looks like front apple was holding Will Chitwood. Yeah, you're going to see uh, yep. Chitwood lined up. As a defensive end that time, oh. and uh, the big guy from Apple couldn't handle it. Yeah, well, he couldn't, and he got him with the jersey to wrestle yep. him to the ground That's from a big behind. Play. It is a big play. But they, but they called an illegal shift. Oh, yeah, it's... Uh, well, Fern Apple is holding uh, either McAllister or Chitwood or whoever is over there a lot. So they mark off only five. They didn't call the hold. An illegal shift is the call from the official. But obviously on our replay, it was like such an obvious hold. It's pathetic almost. 
Yeah. Here's Fronapple. Yeah, That's McLeave. McLeave going around to the left side, and uh, Basham will wrestle him out of bounds at about the line of scrimmage. Basham doing a good job in the end of letting him up easy. So it'll bring up second down and 10 now. Ball is back to the 15-yard line. Keep your eye on this wide side of the field. That's where Eric Cronapple is lined up as tight end. He shifts to the other side. Boy, you got to count for him. And he gets loose. He is loose. He's being chased, being chased. Got a man in there. Good job. Keys doing Keys a good job doing of stepping a good up. Job breaking that up. And, you know, I was talking to Raymond Keys, uh, Alexander's dad at the half, as I mentioned earlier. I said, well, Coach, uh, uh, Raymond, how's it going? He said, well, uh, my son got beat in there, as you saw. And I said, well, he's so he'll be proud of this one right here. Tell you what, uh, good-looking kid, just a sophomore for uh, Franklin County. And as you said, Glenn, he got beat a couple times in the uh, first half. But uh, Not he makes up. Uh, for one of them right there yes, because sir. he doesn't do that at six. Third down and ten. They and get a first inside the five. One apple is split out here and Keys is on him. You got to get up real close and personal here. Here's, Looking for him. Looking for him on the fade route. He's out. He's out of bounds. He's out of bounds and plus on top of that he pushed off. But no foul, no harm, I guess. So here we go. There's there's a replay from Apple. Look at him hanging up there. He he knows what to do. Obviously, it's okay, just going, he pushed off. Yeah. I mean that's that, that's a penalty, and the official looking right at it. So it's fourth down and ten. Why, if I see that, they don't. <laughs> What's wrong? Colonial <laughs> Forge takes a timeout here. Fourth down, right. so they can talk about. So it. will we. Three forty-five left. Period number three. 34-28 Franklin County. We're coming right back. You're watching Eagle football on Cable 12. Fourth down and 10. You see Colonial Forge heading back after going to the sideline for the timeout. They're not going to go for the field goal. They got a wing right. And they're not going to try to draw anybody off sides. That's McCleave. And here's Fronapple. He keeps the football. He's in trouble. And he's going to run. Does he? No, he's no, short. No, he's out short, of out of bounds. Boy, I tell you, that is a big time play by the Franklin County defense. So the, the Eagles are going to get the football. Fronapple. And you watch big Greg O'Neill from his tackle slot showing a little foot speed, a little shake and bake there by Fronapple. But uh, Brandon Maddox, yep. I mean, he hangs a hat on Fronapple. <laughs> And he'll do it, too. He put that right in right underneath his chin. So here we go. First down for Franklin County. 3.36 left to play in the third period. Good defense for Franklin County. Held them eight plays and out on down. This football is at the seven-yard line. Eagles 97 or 93 yards away. Gilbert to the right side, and he's he going to bottle up. up. Slam, slam to the ground. Cox putting the slam on Gilbert this time. Boy, and I, I mean, once again, you look at Colonial Fords, they have got absolutely the whole farm up on the uh, line of scrimmage. Shaw has been to the sideline to get the play. See that Aaron Bird, who had checked out of the game uh, several series ago, is back in there at the uh, linebacker slot. Next finger must be okay. Here's Spencer, and he'll run out and give him a little bit of room over the 10 up to around the 11 yard line. Here it is on the replay. That quick hitter in uh, Franklin County sealing off and allows Spencer to uh, get up in there. That's big yardage. He picks up about uh, eight, nine yards. So it's third down. We'll call it six. Big play here for Franklin County. They've got to pick it up or give it up. Buck running with 223 left to play in the third period. Shaw will set him up. Here's Spencer and Tough Sledden. Oh, you're right. Tough Sledden. 
not going to run over top of those uh, big tackles. And you're going to see Cox. number 78 there, Chaz Martin. I mean, you just can't move 365 very far. No, you can't. So Franklin County is going to have to kick the football away. Nick Adams uh, with some wind at his back. Yep, he'll stand back just in his end zone to get the snap. Scott is going to be deep. It looks like uh, Colonial Forge could end up with a short field. It gets the ball away. Good punt. Good kick. It's going to go out of bounds and no return. High snap, and Colonial Forge lined up that time just in the safe punt formation, and uh, Franklin County dodges what could have been a real bad bullet there. 38-yard punt. Franklin County's long snapper that time, Aaron Dickey, ball just a little bit high. And when he gets up a little bit high, you know, Nick Adams is only, what, about 5'9 yep, or something. but it, so. uh, it throws the timing off. Yeah. So here we go. They trail. 34-28, Colonial Forge has the ball at their own 47-yard line. Fronaffle sets them up. And boy, they're showing pass all yep. the way. Wide out to the right side, motion man. Fronaffle gives it to Scott. Boy, look at the wall set up. He could go. Scott could go. Nick Adams will push him out of bounds. Well, you can see that one setting up. Well, you sure could, and Franklin County is overloaded on the uh, far side. They're coming, nobody at home here. The uh, linebacker, E.J. Manns, he gets caught up in the inside. Absolutely no protection. Nick Adams does a good job of flattening out or, or taking the right uh, angle of pursuit that time to force Scott out of bounds. So first down, football at the 16-yard line. Cundiff is over the ball. And uh, Franklin County has uh, That's keys, keys down. Down. grabbing the uh, back of his calf like it's one of those cramp deals. So on his toes. We'll, we'll just hold it here until we see what's going on. A lot of time left in this football game. 116 left in period number three. 34 28, Franklin County over Colonial Forge. You know, you. Sort of got the feeling talking to folks here when we got here. And by the way, a big thank you to uh, A.D. Mark Holmes. What a nice gentleman he was. His assistant, uh, Greg Carter. By the way, Mark Holmes played for Hank Norton back in the junior college days at Farrell College. Baseball guy. And, yep. And uh, uh, Mark Holmes also uh, told us that Greg Carter, his assistant, has a daughter at Farrell College right now, as a matter of fact. Yeah. They, so, they were nice enough to meet us here yesterday afternoon, show us the facilities. Yep. Pouring down rain and just rolled out the red carpet. We really appreciate it. Here's Fronapple. Room to the left. Got a man going left. And that's Wilson. Here's Wilson. Wilson. Oh, you got a oh, tuck through. Man, he's inside the five to about the three. Heavens, first time we've seen that play today. Tell you what, once again, he's a load. And uh, he gets the football, a big hole, and he just cuts it back to the right side. And a sprint for the goal line. Franklin County drags him down on about the uh, four. Just the length of the football inside the four. All right. One minute left to play in period number three. Look for 2-2 to get it in. And he, he does, and he doesn't. Does he get, does he get in? No, no he, he doesn't get in. Just about loses a football. As a matter of fact, he had a knee down back. Let's see where they put the football. No, they're not going to call it. But his knee was down back about the uh, two-yard line. And that's put it about right outside the one-yard line. Yep. Second and goal. He halved it with you there, Ben. <laughs> it's about as good as you can get it, I guess. Scott going out to the left side. Tweedy coming to the right. Same play set, look for the same play call. Yep. Throne apple, Throne takes apple. It no, no signal yet. Touchdown. Touchdown. So, we're tied now at 34, and Colonial Forge can go ahead with the point after. You think Franklin County's going to rush this one? Oh, oh. Keep your eye on 26. I tell you, the emotions in this football game have been back and forth. I'm just watching the crowd a little bit. You look here and now, Colonial Forge folks are up. They're cheering, and across the way, Franklin County is sort of quieted down. But man, emotions running all over the place in this football game. 
Blake Fronaffel will hold. Here is the kick. It's up. It's good. Colonial Forge takes the lead. 35-34. We're coming right back. You're watching Eagle Football on Cable 12. There's the Franklin Finance School Board. Colonial Forge 35, Franklin County 34. 16 seconds left to play in the third period. Franklin County will get the kickoff and then we'll switch ends of the field to finish this ball game. Take Gilbert and Shane Preston deep for uh, Franklin County. Bartosh, Squibb kicks the football. That's Tay Gilbert. Gilbert picks it up. Kept it upfield. Got a hole! Oh, it's Tate coming Gilbert. back! It's coming back! Are you kidding me? Oh, oh, oh. Are you kidding me? How hey, convenient oh. is this? And we had 25 kicked. Nick Adams, while he was down on the field there when he ran up, kicked him. Okay, here's the replay. Gilbert's going to get the ball. Let's watch what's going on. On the 20. Watch the hole open up. Man, I'm not sure oh. I understand that. Oh. I, 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 didn't, I didn't see anything well, coming I, out of that pile. Well, we, when we come back here, I want to see if it's a block in the back. I'm going to say it's a good call, and I'll show you the play. Wait right here. Gilbert's got the football. All right, here we come. And, uh, come on, help me. No, out. I can't help see it. Out. No, I'm wrong. I cannot that see it. That is absolutely horrible. <laughs> Holding against Franklin God County. Oh, how convenient. Well, I guess it must be so. At the 23 yard line, Franklin County will have the football. <laughs> Tell you what, if you're Franklin County, you air one out because a lot of the people on the kickoff team for Colonial Forge just ran down the field. They're a little windy. So here's Shaw. And there's Bird blitzing. Spencer goes nowhere. There it is on the replay. They hit him right in there. Not, I mean, there's nowhere to go. And you got big number 78 nah. back in there again. As we said, Martin is 6'1 and 365. You just don't move him out nah, there. There's nah. no way. I mean, you might screen him. You're not going to move him. I don't know if we can get a shot of that young man or not, but he's got that number 78. Right there he is. Woo! And he is a load. You just don't move him out of there, bro. H-O-S-S. -S. We're coming right back. Period three is over. 35-34, Colonial Forge. You're watching Eagle football on cable 12. Here we go. Franklin County first down. 23-yard line. Shaw rolls back. He's got a man up here. Basham, and it's tipped away. That's good defense there yeah. by uh, Tim Scott. So that'll stop the clock with 11.52 left. Shaw with uh, pretty good protection, but Martin slowly leaking in there. Throws a nice ball. Throws it exactly where he needs to, to the outside and over the shoulder of Basham. But again, uh, good protection by Scott. So Franklin County ready to go. Second down and 10. Or is it third? It's third. Third and 10. Football is at the 24-yard line. Eagles need to get the first. And they're in the Eagles in the uh, short punch set on this side. Here's a little reverse That's play. Preston. This is Preston, and he's got the first down. Tell you what, that is a super, super play call by the Franklin County coaches. Again, got the short bunch on this side, and you're going to see Preston with that counter and coming back and Colonial Forge totally out of position and uh, at the same time give a lot of credit to uh, Preston for changing his uh, field there, picking up a big, big first down. A couple of big blocks over there, too, by Franklin County. He couldn't really tell who they were, but uh, the left side of the uh, Franklin County offense, O'Neill Alexander probably. Here's uh, Gilbert. and uh, Boy, he's hooked by the arm and yeah. dragged down. Got to a lot of scrimmage, and that's about it. Maybe one yard. Hey, if we have a uh, replay. You watch downfield, Greg O'Neill. <laughs> I mean, here's a 300-pound guy that's absolutely driving a safety into the next world. And that safety had something to say to him when he got up. <laughs> 
probably wasn't very nice either. Probably ask him why he knocked him down. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe he just said, how big are you? All right, here we go. Second down and nine. Preston to the right, Basham to the left. Shaw has him. Oh, I like the option. Little option to Gilbert. Like the option. Gilbert over the left side, across the 50 to the 45-yard line to the 44. Hey, T.J. Shaw knows how to do that. Uh, he's a Ferrum guy right there on campus. They do that a lot. Look at that bang. And, and yeah. the block by Jonathan Alexander had a whole lot to do with freeing Gilbert up and getting to the outside in the first down. Colonial Ford's defense is tied. Yep, hands on the hips. There's Spencer. Here's Spencer again, straight ahead. He'll get Tell you what, he stopped for a one-yard gain, finds, finds a way to get two more. Farrick making the stop that time, but Gilbert struggles ahead to the 41-yard line. Shaw gets the play from the sideline. 35-34. Ten minutes to play in the football game. Preston to the right side. Here's Shaw. with the football Lops again, again. given to Gilbert, and this time he's caught. He pays. And he pays. He's going to lose. Back to the Cox, one of the uh, quad captains for Colonial Forge, not fooled that time. So Franklin County will have the football back just over the midfield strike. You see the ball placed down right there by Mr. Barnes. Third down and 15. Shaw will set him up. Rolling to the right. Rolling to the right. Shaw's hit. Gets away. Throws a football. It's caught. And how did, guys, how did Shane Preston get tackled in a pass route? I don't know. He is still on the ground. But he did. You know, that's, I, I want you to watch this on the replay. They're playing by Australian well, football rules no, no, up here. I want you to look at this. I mean, I don't know if we, we don't have it here, but uh, Preston actually got tackled. I mean, he got flipped over uh, on the uh, – on the pass route that time. And Gilbert's down on the far yep. sideline also. He took a big hit. We'll take a timeout. 8.45 left, 35-34, Colonial Forge. We're coming right back. You're watching Eagle football on Cable 12. 8.45 left to play in the football game, 35-34. The Eagles are going to have to punt the football. Looks like Scott is deep. Franklin County gets a high kick, but the wind holds it up a little bit. And it will take a bounce and be down. The official waited a long, long, long time to uh, blow the whistle. But I tell you what, Franklin County had touched it uh, football down. Yeah, I mean, I don't understand that, you know. So the football's at the 34-yard line. Colonial Forge has the lead, and they have the football with 8.20 left. They've got the wind also. And the wind to their back. Need to stop here. That's Scott, Here's Scott the going around the right side. He cuts back and gets over the 35 up to the 36-yard line. Alexander Keyes will make the stop. That's a play we've seen all afternoon. And uh, once Scott gets the uh, football in his hands, he's got a lot of green in front of him, both shirts and field. And Franklin County able to stop him about four yards short. Tweedy wide out to the left side. We got the double wing set up. Man going in motion. Hold everything. The flag comes out. This will probably be a motion penalty. Derek, I'm not sure if you saw anything. Yeah, that's what they're that's what they're signaling. There it is. Yep. 
and Franklin County coaching staff has, has been on that official about that all game too. So, clock goes, 7.42 left, 35-34. Hilton wide to the left side. We got a slot to the left. Front Apple, give it to Wilson. And they, uh, boy, I'll tell you one thing, uh, they're going to shove him out of bounds. But that play right there, they set that wall up coming around this outside, Nova Clark, really, really, they seal off so good on that play. Sure do, and uh, you're going to see keys come up and doesn't break down, dives at uh, Wilson's ankles, and that's a big kid, good feet, picks up a ton of yardage. First down, football at the 43 of uh, Colonial Forge. Throw Naffel for the football. Reed going around to the right side. He cuts back. My goodness, he can't. How can he get through there? He's oh, quick. My, oh, my. He is some kind of quick. Basham makes the stop. This is Trey Reed. He's a sophomore. Watch him. Watch him cut back right there. And the uh, Franklin County tacklers making one of the uh, cardinal mistakes in tackling, dropping his head. Got to keep your head up. Another first down at the Franklin County 45-yard line. Front Apple sets him up. Double wing again. Man coming in motion to the left side. That's Wilson. Wilson Big right hole. up the middle. He runs over people. And Brandon Maddox caught the front of that one. <laughs> he runs it to the 35-yard line. They're going to mark it just outside the 35. But you watch right here. Wilson. Got uh, the guard pulling. Yep. He's hit there, and <laughs> man. Timeout, Franklin County, they need one. 6.38 left, 35-34. We're coming right back. You're watching Eagle football on Cable 12. It's a second down. Franklin County needs the football back. They've got to stop the Eagles right here. Right up the middle is Wilson, and they do stop him after about a one-yard gain. He got the, he, I think he got the first down there. Yep. He did. I think I said it was second down and nine, but it was actually second down and one, not, not nine. Football is just inside the 35-yard line. Hilton will be the wide out to the right side this time. Reed is the wing to the right. Scott the wing to the left side. Wilson is the back. Front Apple, Apple keeps, keeps, keeps the football. He runs ahead inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Keys with a tackle, for, or Hughes rather, for Franklin County. Ronan Forge right here with 6.03 left in the football game. All they're interested in is running the clock. They score great, but uh, they just want to control the football. They have the one-point lead. Tweedy heading out to the right side. He'll be set up over there. Got a wing left this time. Front Apple gives the ball off, and this time, Trey Reed is hit in the back. By the flag. Mr. Barnes losing a little control there. Dylan McAdams, 5'11", 170 senior. And I'll tell you what, that young man has played himself one heck of a ball game at that defensive end. Here not, this not only this afternoon, Woo! but every single cotton picking football game. Every game. Built him to the right again. Again, the double wing setup. Third down and 10. Scott, the pitch out. There's that same play going to the right side. They will not get it this time. Hughes will make the stop. And Lonely Forge will go for it here. Yeah, obviously I think they will. It's fourth down. May even take a timeout to boot. But I doubt. And, uh, you know, if they don't pick it up, Franklin County is going to get the ball back, and it'll, it will be the Eagles' ball game to win if Absolutely. they get it back right here. They're going to have about four minutes left if they can stop them right here. They'll get the ball back with four minutes left. Keep your eye on 22. Throw an apple. Coming over here to the left side. Got a pass. Incomplete. It was tipped. 
Franklin County is going to take over. Well, I'll tell you what, I, if, if I'm Colonial Forge, I, I, I don't understand that call. I absolutely don't I understand. I do that. not. O'Neill got his hands on the ball. Good job. Watch O'Neill right Man, there. That, that's a good job of reading the quarterback's eyes. So Franklin County with a bunch of time left here. One timeout left. Four eighteen left. They trail thirty-five to thirty-four. And here is T.J. Shaw. And there's Preston. that counter with the punch to this side goes nowhere. Shane Preston, and I mean, he is just absolutely swallowed in the uh, middle of the line there. Matt Bartosh on the stop that time. Second down and 10. Shane Preston coming to the right side. Shaw using a lot of time. Back. Got a man up here. Basham makes the catch. Man, what a catch. I, that's just, if you're Franklin County, you want that situation. Basham, big kid, 6'4", right at 200 pounds. And Shaw gets the good protection. The Franklin County line doing an outstanding job. Nice ball. And right there, it's just jump ball. Yes, sir. 32-yard completion. Franklin County, first down. 325 left, 41 yard line. A field goal will win it for Franklin County. But they've got to get down there first. Shaw sets them up. Gilbert going around to the left side and he's gonna get inside the 40 to about the 37 yard line. Franklin County with what, one timeout left, Steve? That's right, one left. One timeout left. The clock is running, the ball is at the 30, just inside the length of the football, inside the 38. You see the clock right there at Kip Hall Field. So here we go, second down and eight. Shaw. Rolls left. The ball Bumble. is on the ground. Shaw's got it. got to have it. Let's see who gets the football. Shaw's got it over here at the sideline. Coach, oh, boy, really Coach lucky. Jones is saying that's an incomplete pass. Let's see what they call. Nope, they call it a fumble. They call it a fumble. Clock is running. Football, here it is on the replay. Oh, that's an incomplete pass. His arms going forward. So the Eagles under two minutes. But they got two, two plays to pick up 14 yards. Timeouts being called. Timeouts going to be called by Colonial Forge. That'll be their second timeout. 144 left, timeout, 45-34, Colonial Forge. stop the clock with 136 left. Well, it's coming down to this next play, gentlemen. Yep. Boy, that's one that's whoa, just a little off balance. Oh. Been a great catch. Well, he, he was behind the yep. defender, had to come around in yep. front that's of a good him. job of coming back yes. on the football. Good job of Gilbert to try to get that one, but couldn't hang on. County's taking its last time out. So with 136 left, 35-34, Colonial Forge. For Franklin County, fourth down for the Eagles. Shaw rolls to the right 
inside. People everywhere. Basham. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? What a catch. Franklin. What a catch. First down and goal. And a throwback to the weak side of the field. Basham's hurt. But you watch Shaw. I mean, he looks him off to the right, and then he's got the throwback pass. And one more time, just a jump ball, and what an effort by Thad Basham. I think Basham is okay. He just came down on the football, it looked like. Probably knocked the air out yeah. of him. So 35-yard pass play on fourth and 14. Franklin County with no timeouts left. In field goal range. With a lot of time clock in the first is, down. Clock is running. No field, no timeouts left. You do not want to get a delay of game here. Franklin County unorganized. Let's see if they may throw that little throw back to Gilbert here. Here's Shaw. Give to Gilbert around the He's got side. some room. And he's going to be knocked out of bounds. They say the clock continues to go. He landed inbounds, evidently. Franklin County needs to get set up and spike the football. Yep. 45 seconds left. Here's Gilbert again coming around the left side, and he's going to be out of bounds this time, and that will stop the clock. Man, that clock leaked a lot of time after he stepped out of bounds. <laughs> All right, you see it right there. Franklin County at the five-yard line. Third down. You've got to throw the football right here. You absolutely do. Because if you don't get the first down, you've got to be in a position to stop the clock to kick the field goal. Let's see what the call is. Enix over the football. Shaw. Shaw running to the well, right side. He's got some pressure. <laughs> To spike the football. You got to spike the football. Fourth down. Fourth down. Fourth down. Yeah. You got, got to, to set up and go. I don't know if they're going to get it off or not. They're going to get it off. Thirty-three yard field goal attempt. It's good. It's good. Yes, it is. Yes. left. Penalty flag is down. It's going to be a celebration penalty. Who cares? <laughs> Franklin County, the field goal up and good. <laughs> they still haven't put the score up. <laughs> It'll be penalty's gonna be marked off on the kickoff. Field goal is good. Got eight tenths of a second left. So Franklin County will get the football kicked off. Thirty-seven thirty-five. And if the Eagles can hang on right here on the kickoff, they'll play again next week. And this will be the first time in history that Franklin County has won a regional playoff game. 37-35, Franklin County. Some happy folks across the way over there. We're holding it here, by the way. The ride back to Southern Virginia will be a lot easier for these kids here after this one. What a football game. My goodness. And, you you know, you thought there for a second they may not get the play off. Shaw ran to the sideline. The coaches are yelling. You've got to do it. No timeout. That was an eight-play, 69-yard drive cultivated with the 33-yard field goal by Colby Boone. 
battlefield next week, it looks like, if the Eagles can make a tackle on the kickoff. Colby Boone will kick it off. One play. There it is. Point eight seconds. And there's a, a squib kick. It's picked up. Ball is fumbled. This ball game is over. Franklin County has won 37 to 35. We're coming back. Our post game show coming up from down on the field. You are watching Eagle Football on Cable 12. We're back with our Davis Law Firm post-game show. Join us now, winning, and I mean winning, Franklin County head coach Chris Jones, 37-35 coach. I know I didn't pay to get in. Did you, and should we? Uh, I don't even know, man. <clears throat> All I know is I'm happy to take these guys, man. You talking about character. You know, everybody knows we didn't play great, but daggone, build it and just keep battling, and uh, I love them. It was just a great, great game, and our kids never quit, and they believed in what we were doing, and uh, Great things happen when that happens. Well, Coach, I, I think you kind of subbed it up there. You did not quit. You had obviously a lot of chances. You get down by two scores, the waning moments there, and not a cooler customer on the field than T.J. Shaw. No timeouts, fourth down, the clock winding down. He's down on one knee, and he just gingerly looks back at the clock, and there's 10 seconds left. He gets a snap back, and my goodness, what a kick by Boone and uh, Franklin County's first playoff win. You're coming back in this direction next week, playing uh, number three ranked uh, in the state battlefield. They're undefeated. Obviously, they're here scouting the football game. It's going to be a great ride back to Rocky Mount this evening. Awesome. We're going to celebrate this one. I'll tell you, uh, I told these guys, there's not a many chances a lot you get to make history. And uh, we blew our chance last week. And uh, But I told them I got onto their butt at halftime. I said, fellas, we're not playing the way we're capable. I can't coach you anymore what I'm doing. You, you got to get it done. And uh, they did the second half. Well, Coach, they did. And one of the neat things uh, when you guys have really had to scrap, everybody contributed. Obviously, uh, your defense contributed. And I mean, when you see that many points posted, maybe you don't think that. But the defense really did a whale of a job. The offense did a whale of a job. And the special teams, one more time, they showed up big time. Yeah, uh, some of those calls, I think we'll all agree, was a little bad on kickoff return. We got called holding. And then, uh, you know, we don't give up those three passes. We're in great shape for the whole game. And, uh, I'm just proud of these guys, you know, and, uh, you know, coming back to Rocky Mountain, uh, you know, it's, it's exciting. Well, Coach, uh, again, uh, Battlefield, it's in Haymarket. Uh, before you get to Mas Manassas off of 66, you hang a left, and it's not uh, 10 minutes further than this location. So, obviously, you want to see a lot of red in the stands. Probably next Saturday afternoon is when you'll play this one. It's their choice, but typically when it gets to that round, it's an afternoon game on Saturday. Yeah, we're bleeding as much red as we can. We need some more. And I need, need everybody to be Franklin County proud and, uh, you know, it's a great day for our football program. Coach, enjoy it. Great job, and have a safe trip back to Rocky Mountain. We'll see you next weekend. All right, thank you, guys. It's Franklin County head coach Chris Jones, you're watching Eagle Football on Cable 12. Welcome back, everybody, to Liberty High School in Billsen, Virginia, to the uh, Phil, here we are for our post-game show, and gentlemen, what an exciting football game here. Man, the never-say-die Franklin County Eagles pulled it out here on that field goal at the end, Melvin Clark, and type game it should be for a regional playoff game. Absolutely. We knew it was closely matched. Uh, never in my wildest imagination did I would did I dream that there would be that many points scored, but we knew it would be tight, and my goodness, uh, this is what high school football is supposed to be about. Two good football teams back and forth, and Franklin County really, really delivered on a beautiful afternoon. And you know what? We talked uh, in the pregame show and some in the ball game about how in the last uh, half of the season, especially, how every week the kicking game really has been a huge part, and what a huge part today. Well, it was, and uh, not only the kicking game, but the 
special teams and everybody on this football team contributed. Uh, with the amount of points that Colonial Ford scored, you'd think, well, gee whiz, the defense didn't play very good. But the defense really did a good job, made stops when they had to. The offense did a great job. The special teams, I mean, just all over it. Just a great all-round effort. All right, let me turn to uh, Steve Anglin. And Steve, I know you're excited about this, tying the number of wins the school has ever had at nine. And hey, man, it was good. It certainly is. Uh, first time ever in the history of Franklin County High School. They've won a regional playoff game. And, you know, the fans were excited. Heck, we were excited. And, uh, you know, it's just hard to put it into words. You know, looking at some numbers, Tay Gilbert had 23 rushes. He had 217 yards on the ground today, despite having to come off the field twice for injuries. He had, uh, let's see, two receptions for 50 yards. That's 267 yards of uh, offense from that young man. Thad Basham four, caught four balls for 88 yards, none bigger than that last one he caught. Fourth down, 14, goes up and pulls one in for uh, 30, 35 yards, keep that drive alive. And, uh, Boone able to get that field goal over from 33 yards and Franklin County wins a very, very big football game. All right, let me turn to Derek Woods. And, you know, we talked about the kick and kicking against the wind. The wind was holding that ball up, and I'm holding my breath. <laughs> I was, too, the entire last minute and a half. I uh, never thought Franklin County, I tell you, to be honest with you, it looked like they weren't going to get out there and get it off. Uh, Boone cleared that crossbar by about a football and a half, but that's all it needs. And uh, what a high school football game. My goodness, just unreal. One week to go. That's right. All right, all right let me turn around here to Carlton Wilson. Carlton was handing me stats all during the ball game. And, you know, uh, special game for these kids. You know, that ninth win is great. First win uh, in postseason play ever. And uh, it's just, uh, as far as statistics go, which uh, will matter after the season's over, the big one is the win. But they just keep giving the kids opportunities to add and add. And I wanted to tell you, I think the only only people out here today, even at halftime, that thought Franklin County had a chance was the people in red and white. I heard some people, I'm sorry to say, from uh, higher ups than me <laughs> in the state down there talking about who this is. be the Virginia High School League. Yeah, who, yeah go ahead and say it. It's all, all right. All they wanted to do was talk about who the other team was going to play next. Yeah. I just came on back up and scored the game. <laughs> but we're so proud of the kids and the community. A lot of fans here today. We'll look for them next week. All right, Thank you. All right, everybody. Uh, we're going to see you guys next week. And is it Battlefield, Melvin Clark? Haymarket. Hey Market. We'll see you up there. We hope it's going to be probably be a Saturday afternoon game. But, hey, we'll let you know during the week what's going on with all of that. So I'm Glenn Lynch repeating our final score for the final time in uh, Liberty or at Liberty High School here at the uh, Kip Hall Field. <laughs> Franklin County has won this football a football game 37 to 35. We'll see you guys on the road next week. Have a good week, everybody.